NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Seattle Seahawks. Good afternoon, everyone. From the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington, where playing conditions are always perfect with the lid on. As today, two longtime rivals in the AFC West, the Chiefs and the Seahawks, are ready to tee it up. Kansas City coming in with a 1-3 and three record, but all the teams that have played them say, look out, they're much better than that. Turnovers have hurt Coach Marty Schottenheimer's team. They lead the NFL in turnovers through the first four weeks. If they can cut that down, they're going to start to win. Chuck Knox knows that. He expects as physical and as tough a game as the Seahawks are going to be in for some time. He knows this Kansas City team is still up despite the one and three record. Into the ball is Nick Lowry as Kansas City kicks off. Jefferson runs the ball back and takes it across the country. James Jefferson, an all-corner, all-pro from Canada, breaks into open field, and it looks like he's going to go the distance. One man in pursuit. He'll not make the play as Jefferson goes 97 yards with the opening kickoff, and Seattle takes a 6 to nothing lead. TD up. Extra point attempt now by Norm Johnson with Jeff Kemp holding. It's good. And the favored Seahawks strike fast. The home team has won the last 13 times these two teams have played. James Jefferson breaks it on the opener. Ahmad. Just an excellent run back by James Jefferson. You see him take the ball here inside of his own five-yard line. He breaks one tackle right here, and he gets a chance to reset here, and this is what really makes the play. There's a nice move right there. Now, watch number 57, Tony Woods, come into the play. Is there a man 45 trying to catch him? Tony Woods makes a great choice in not trying to make that block and allowing Jefferson to go. You see number 45, Stan Petrie, coming close to Jefferson. Woods just holds off and... Jefferson just trots that baby into the end zone, and that's the way you want to start a football game. Is it ever? With a bang. Jefferson is from Texas a and I. He was an all-pro player in the Canadian Football League for three years. In his first year with the Seahawks, he's had some up-and-down moments. He's had some problems returning punts, handling the ball. And they're going to switch that job to David Hollis today. But Jefferson's stock shoots up on the opening play of this game. The first time in history that Seattle has run an opening kickoff for a touchdown. Rusty Tillman is the special teams coach for the Seahawks. Looks like he just had one scored against him. But <laughs> Long way to go. A little too early for Rusty to really feel happy about it. I guarantee he's happy inside, but he'd like to see a lot more of that. The one thing about his job, now that all of a sudden his kickoff return team played well, it turns right around. He wants to make sure that this doesn't happen to them going back the other way. So he doesn't get a lot of chance to, to relax and feel satisfied about that kickoff return. So we have our second kickoff of the game coming up right now. Todd McNair, a rookie, and Danny Copeland are back deep for Kansas City, a high spinner. Copeland, number 25, takes it at his 10-yard line. He breaks the wedge and then is struck down at the 27-yard line. So Kansas City with 38-year-old Ron Jaworski to be protected by this group, a big mobile offensive line, the veteran Mike Webster, the nine-time pro bowler with the Steelers at center for Kansas City. Okoye is having a standout year, the big fullback from Nigeria. An extra receiver formation, Rob Thomas, a rookie, will come in, so will Stephon Page. As Kansas City down 7-0 after the opening kickoff, Goes on offense, first down and 10. The big back, Christian Okoye. And he is out to the 33-yard line. Some call him Okoye, some call him Okoye. He has his somewhere in the middle, doesn't he? <laughs> when we asked him how he pronounced it. That's right. I told him if I called him Christian, I'd be right. Said, yeah, man, that's good. 
<laughs> but he certainly puts fear in the hearts of of all everybody on a defensive football team but especially linebackers and defensive cornerback really a delightful guy speaks perfect English almost with the lilt of an English accent and he's going to get a lot of carries today Kansas City's game plan is to run the ball right at Seattle and here comes the big man McCoye knocks the ball out and gets it across the 35 to the 38 yard line as the Glasgow the strong safety from the University of Washington makes the stop for Seattle and the amazing thing about Christian is that he has not played a lot of football, but watch his read here. He takes a deep hand up, sees that he can't take it off tackle, and breaks the ball out to the outside. And he has the wherewithal to break it inside the outside guy and try to get positive yards up the field. That's something that you can't teach. That's just a natural uh, thing that you get that he has. I mean, you can't teach a person how to find the hole. And for a guy that hasn't played football that long, he's only played since 1984. That'd be like me starting to play tennis now and making it to Wimbledon quarterfinals in five years. Impossible. Give it a shot. <laughs> Come to shoot for it. Here's a handoff on first and ten. And Kansas City pounds the ball right at Seattle again. Both these teams last year were among the worst in the NFL at stopping the run. In fact, uh, Kansas City was the worst, and Seattle was 26. As we look at the Seahawks defense, Dwayne Harper and Patrick Hunter at the corners. Glasgow and Eugene Robinson are the safeties. Front seven includes pass rusher Jacob Green and Jeff Bryan. Darren Como will come out on passing down to Lonzo Mitz. A rusher will come in as a fourth down lineman. Kansas City succeeding so far in running the ball at Seattle, but the Seahawks lead 7-0 after James Jefferson ran back the opening kickoff. 97 yards for touchdown. Okoye on second down and three from the 46 is shut down by outside linebacker Tony Wood, number 57. Along with 53, Darren Como. Chuck Knott's come into this game wanting to try and stop Kansas City on first down. That hasn't happened, but they stop him here. Here's Akoya. What they do is they just keep the defense, Seattle defense, keeps coming along the line of scrimmage and try to give him not a place to cut back inside. They did that very well. Tony Woods is not making the tackle. Both these teams want to stop the other one on first down, get into throwing situations. They both have the same game plan, power football. Third down and three now. Ron Jaworski at quarterback with an eye set. Herman Hurd is the deep eye back to the left of your screen. As Page comes in motion, that's Hurd with the ball. And he's not going to get there. Herman Hurd is cut down at the 46-yard line. It'll bring up fourth down and two. Vernon Maxwell in the game. Number 50 was on the play for the blue-clad Seattle Seahawks. Former All-American at Arizona State, Maxwell makes the play. An interesting philosophy here that Seattle feels like they have the advantage because they're small and quick. On the other hand, Kansas City feels like they have the advantage because they got the big, strong linemen. So it'll be a test of wheels here today. Kelly Goodburn hits a punt downfield that David Hollis fair catches for Seattle, a 38-yard punt. And the Seahawks already in the lead, 7-0, get set to go on offense for the first time from scrimmage. Seattle, where we started with the bang, a 97-yard kickoff return by James Jefferson. Don Cricky with Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad, all these Chiefs players are talking about the confidence they have in Marty Schottenheimer, their first-year coach. Well, Don, I think it's because they have no history of winning. So the only history they have is to look over at that sideline and see Marty Schottenheimer and know that he's been there before and the things that he's teaching are the things that they need to learn in order to be a winner. Well, they say when Schottenheimer tells them something, that they're getting better, they believe it because he has had teams in the playoffs four straight years at Cleveland. Some of the recent coaches at Kansas City didn't have that success, and some of it was just looked on as sugarcoating. That's right. You know, when things get tough, and you got to look look at the sideline for some guidance, when you look over there and you see Marty Schottenheimer, one thing you know, he's been there before. This defense is first rate. Kansas City's D. They rate number three overall in the NFL, number two in the AFC, but they can't stop the run here. As Kurt Warner, who's done so well in the recent games, had a terrific game in the fourth quarter comeback when the Seahawks beat the Raiders a week ago at Los Angeles breaks a seven yard run Indianapolis routes Buffalo and knocks Jim Kelly out of the game with a separated left shoulder no reported how long he'll be out the Browns and the Dolphins have gone to OT some other surprising scores New England an upset winner over Houston Tampa Bay leading the Chicago Bears a previously unbeaten team by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter Second down and four coming up now. Handoff and running with the ball is John L. Williams, and he gets to about the 23. 
More on the scoreboard on this fifth Sunday of play. The Vikings lead the winless Lions 24-17, and Green Bay is now a winning team up to 3-2 and two as Dallas falls to 0-5. Oh Seven to nothing, Seahawks with the lead. James Jefferson running back the opening kickoff, 97 yards for a touchdown. Now on third down and four, Dave Craig sets in the shotgun. He's been hot. Craig really on target, one of the most effective passers in the NFL. Blitz comes, out pattern, it's not going to get there. The Chiefs, with perhaps the best four-man secondary in the NFL, gave him nothing to shoot at. Everybody was covered him up. You've got to be hot when you play against a defensive secondary like these guys. These guys can play man-to-man -man straight across the board and just dare you to beat them because, in talking to Tony Dungy, the defensive backfield coach, he said it's the best group of defensive back that he has ever been around, man for man. As a player or a coach, that's a pretty good recommendation considering where he came from, the Steelers. Ruben Rodriguez, oh, in the punt for Seattle, his first punt of the game. Pete Manley is back deep for the Chiefs. Get there, get there, get there. The King Dome is sold out. Interrupted on the opening kickoff, and now the kick downfield is taken by Manley. AC is going to get good field position here as Manley weaves his way to the 50-yard line. A 34-yard punt and a 6-yard return. So the Chiefs are set to start an offense at midfield. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By the exciting, innovative, unconventional new spirit of Dodge. And by GTE. At GTE, the power is on. Back in beautiful Seattle, Washington. First quarter, Don Cricky with Ahmad Rashad. Nine minutes and 32 seconds to play in the first quarter. Ron Jaworski, who quarterbacked four playoff teams at Philadelphia, and was on four playoff teams at the Rams. At age 38, because it's still fun, he still loves to play, and you have to when you got a back like this. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. Speaking about those playoff teams he's been on, he's on a team now that hadn't seen playoff action since 19, I think 1971, the last time they won the playoffs. And the last time they won a playoff game, Ahmad, was when they beat the Vikings, I'm sorry to tell you, in the, although you weren't with the Vikings yet, in 1970, in Super Bowl IV. So long ago, I don't even remember. Now, you were a collegiate. <laughs> Second down and two comes up after an eight-yard run by Akoya. What a weapon. Bang. Big man takes it inside the 40-yard line of Seattle. Darren Como made the stop for the Seahawks. Seattle does not have a big defense. If they have one problem that is that they're outside by the offensive lines are up against. John, I am so amazed at watching Akoya. Watch, he just has no hesitation about hitting the hole. He just picks a spot, puts his head down, and just starts driving forward. And that's bad news for anybody who's trying to tackle him. This is exactly what the Seattle Seahawks did not want to happen. They didn't want to give him that big first down play where they get seven or eight yards and then have it second and short. So Seattle having trouble keeping Kansas City out of short yardage as they can. They bust the Koya right up the middle and inside the 35-yard line. Alonzo Mitt, 61, makes the play. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Koya just ran over Jeff Bryant, but here's a look at Jacob Green, who's going against Irv Eatman. And Irv Eatman has a 50-pound weight difference on him, and if, if uh, Jacob doesn't come up with some kind of tricky move, he's in for a long afternoon. But knowing Jake, he's got those quick feet. He's got to come up with a different plan. Green has been a big time pro bowler, only weighs 250. And Eaton, as you pointed out, Ahmad, is at 350 pounds heavier. Second down and three. And again, big Christian Akoya moves the pile, and he gets it close to the 30-yard line where he had to go for a first down. Let's see what the spot is. It looks like he might have it. Christian Akoya is power personified. He hits this hole, and I mean, that's when the play starts, once he hits the hole. Here's Jacob and Eatman. They're out of standoff, but now to watch Akoya. He gets by both of them, gets into a pack, and then just starts driving the power forward. 
this is bad news if you're Jacob Green. You got a guy 300 pounds in front of you, and if you get by him, you got a guy 260 coming at you 100 miles an hour. An obvious spot that he had the first down. They call for a marker measurement anyway. And they confirm it, and so the Chiefs move on and get the ball just inside the 30-yard line of Seattle. Seahawks lead 7 to nothing on a 97-yard return of the opening kickoff by James Jefferson. Kansas City has lost its last 10 road games. I can see Don White Jaworski enjoys playing. If you got a big fullback like that, you can hand off to him, make it a little easier. Turn around and give it to 35. Bob Scott's up now. First and 10 for Kansas City. Quick out. Throwing a catch. Herman Hurd has the ball. He has a history of big games against Seattle. Number 44, Herman Hurd. And that first down throw was good for a gain of about five yards. Six minutes and 32 seconds to play. The Miami Dolphins have come out of their slump with an upset of the Cleveland Browns in overtime. Cincinnati in command of Pittsburgh now in the fourth quarter. Second down and six arises for the Chiefs. Three wide outs in the game. All position at the 26-yard line. Akoya again slants as those guards pull. Good mobility despite the great size in the offensive line of the Chiefs with Mark Addicts and Dave Lutz at guards. John Alden, Irv Eatman at sent at the tackles and Mike Webster at center. That big offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs, the technique that they want to use is they just want to get on the people in front of them and push them whichever way they want to go and then let Akoya pick a spot, pick a crease, and then just fire near 100 miles an hour. When you're an offensive lineman, you've got a huge back like Akoya behind you, it, it, it gives you a little reason why you want to get on your block and get out of the way. The last thing you want is this big guy to run up over the top of you. He's already run the ball nine times for 44 yards, Akoya. And a tenth time, and this time a linebacker shoots. Darren Como gets the gap on third down and two and makes the knockdown. And place kicker Nick Lowry is coming out for the Chiefs. Como, number 53, along with Jacob Green. Como is in for the injured Brian Bosworth. There is a spot where you see the offensive line just trying to push. It's a great play by Como coming off the side and making that tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Jacob Green one time. This is He's getting, he's getting double teamed by people in there this time. A 39-yard field goal coming up for Lowry, who is 6 of 7 this year from 49 in. Only misses are 2 from over 50. He spins it up, and it looks like he's got it through the right upright. So Lowry gets points on the board for the Chiefs. Now a 7-3 game, Seattle. Kansas City set the kickoff when we come back. That's how the series stands. 11 to 10, the Chiefs lead it, and the home team in command the last 13 meetings. They split last year. Seahawks won here 31 to 10, and the Chiefs won at Arrowhead 27 to 24. Nick Lowry, who just hit a 39-yard field goal to make it a 7 to 3 game Seattle, set the kick off now for the Chiefs. High spinning kick carries downfield, and this is the man, Jefferson, who ran the first one back 97 yards for a touchdown. A little short of that this time, he gets to the 22-yard line for Lewis Cooper, was the man who made the stop for Kansas City. Mattis and Wilson, two huge tackles, anchor the outside of the offensive line. Bailey and Millard, the guards, feet the center. Dave Craig at quarterback, John L. Williams and Kurt Warner, both excellent rushers when they go the five wide, four wide receiver set. We'll see Jeff Chadwick and Paul Scanzi come in the game to join Brian Blades and Lewis Clark. Starting tight end is a first-year player, Robert Tyler, from South Carolina State for Seattle. First down and 10 now for the Seahawks. Williams looks for a hole. There's not much there on that front. That includes nose tackle Bill Maz. There's Neil Smith, who was the second player picked in the entire draft last year, number 90. Right end is the veteran Mike Bell, who was the number two player picked in the entire draft when he came out. Secondary includes... Lewis and Ross at the corners. Porter and six-time All-Pro Duran Cherry is the safety. 
Front seven, they're really thrilled about the play of Chris Martin, and they say Derek Thomas, number 58 on the right outside, is going to be an all-pro, the rookie from Alabama. Sally Moore will come in as an extra pass rusher on long yardage. Now Dave Craig triggering a throw. And it's all Scamzi. And look like Largent angling across the middle, fielding a low thrown ball on a second and sixth play. He has a first down amount. Kevin Ross, one of the best cornerbacks in the National Football League, and this is the kind of route that you have to run. You see Craig coming back. Scanzi has taken the ball out, and then he comes back underneath. You almost got to try to run away from those cornerbacks. If you try to run anything in front of them, then I think that the, the onus is on you instead of them because they cover so well. Good throw by Craig, too. He had to keep it low. Coverage was there. And that's first down and 10 for Seattle. You like those balls over the middle low. You don't want to be stretching. No. Two things happen. You catch it and fall down. Long ball. Kurt Warner. Right through his hands. A perfectly thrown ball. Also a penalty marker down in the Seattle backfield. Kevin Roth, number 31, was the reason that Kurt Warner didn't catch this ball because Kurt, Kurt swept around that left side. And he could see the ball coming over his shoulder, but he could always also holding. Offense, number 87, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. He could also see Kevin Ross in front of him. I was talking to Derek Thomas before the game. I said, do you ever want to play offense? He said, you know, sometimes I think about playing tight end, but every time I see Kevin Ross hit somebody, I don't want to play. I don't want anything to do with the defense. He said, little Kevin Ross? He said, he's a powerhouse. Well, Tony Dungy, who's the defensive backfield coach, and Bill Cowell, the defensive coordinator, say both single him out as the standout defender so far this season for the Chiefs. He's short, and that's all he is. He is muscle man. First and 20 after the holding call and dropping the throw deep is Craig. That's a rip, hit ball, it's incomplete. So tough to complete on Kansas City, and the pass rush was good. He was looking at Scanzi, but the Chiefs got the big rush. Derek Thomas, the rookie from Alabama. Derek Thomas is, is one of those rare linebackers that can not only rush the passer, but he can also, he's an excellent cover man. I, I talked to him last night about his biggest adjustment coming into the league, and he said he hasn't had any. <laughs> Look at the four games, three and a half sacks. He said he looked at it like players can play an average of three and a half years in the league. He said, shoot, I played against all those guys when I was a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> he's the Lawrence Taylor Cornelius Bennett mold, a dominator. Second and 20 now for Dave Craig, and he is slapped back. The ball is batted down by Neil Smith. Six foot five inch, 270 pound defensive end from Nebraska. Chief defense looking as good as advertised early in this game with 237 to play in the first quarter. That's right, Don, and that was a cover, that was a cover sack. You see, Dave Craig has time to throw this ball, but there is absolutely nobody open. They've got everybody covered downfield. This, it's an excellent shot of showing the defensive line playing in conjunction with the defensive cornerbacks. Everybody doing the job. Because he certainly has a chance to throw that ball. Now Craig faced with a difficult situation. Third down and 20. And here comes the KC rush. Watch 58 to the lower portion of your screen. That's Derek Thomas. There's a throw. The connection made to John L. Williams. He gets away from one tackler. But he is got right about 12 short of a first down. He did gain about 12 yards on the play. Kevin Ross finally knocked John L. Williams out of bounds. Seattle's MVP a season ago. Here you see Jared Thomas trying to put pressure on the quarterback, but Dave Craig always has an outlet. Most of the time it's John L. Williams. Once again, Derek Thomas being handled there. Gets the ball off to John L. Williams who breaks his first tackle, but Kevin Ross, the power pack, runs him out of bounds. So on a fourth down and eight play, Ruben Rodriguez is in to punt again. Deep man Pete Manley, the former Detroit Lion. He's played well for the Chiefs. Well hit ball. High kick downfield. Manley will run it back from his 27. And another standout special team tackle, a 41-yard punt, a five-yard return. And KC and Marty Schottenheimer's team set to go back on offense. Long after the game is over, NBC Sports is still on the line. Dial 1-900-226-8000 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 
Well, if you dial it up today, you'll find out that Christian Okoye is running the ball a lot here, Amad. <laughs> That's right. Kansas City, they've had the ball for 12 plays, 11 rushes, 10 by Okoye. They've only thrown the ball one time. That's the way you keep those turnovers down. Don't put it up in the air. Hand that ball off to Okoye. No frills football by the Chiefs. Now Okoye's out. James Saxon is in as the lone setback. Age in motion. Jackson breaks tackles and comes out of the pile with plus yardage out to the 39-yard line. He gained about six yards on the play before Darren Como knocked him down. Jackson, the second year back from San Jose State. And this is a, an excellent change of pace. You get the big fella coming in there, pounding in there all the time. Then all of a sudden, you put a little quick line, guy like Saxon, and he gets right by that line of scrimmage, and he's into that secondary, secondary in no time. As a former running back, there is nothing better than having big 300-pounders off in front of you. You can always find a crack somewhere. Jackson just did. A second and three arises now for the Chiefs, who fail in the first quarter, seven to three. Jaworski play picking. He's got time. There's a throw and a catch downfield to Chris Russell to the 41-yard line. The free agent tight end who came in from the Houston Oilers out of the Stanford makes a 20-yard reception. He shorts, he fakes into the line of scrimmage, sets back, and he gets Dressel coming across. He's wide open, and that ball is put right on the money. One thing about Ron Jaworski, he has, he has not lost any strength out of his arm. He can still put that baby on a rope. Like you're saying, when Joe Namath did their game last week, Namath saw him warming up, said, man, you still got a good arm. Said, yeah, I'm old, I'm not dead. <laughs> His arm is a lot livelier than his age, that's for sure. Jaworski says this KC team is one big win away from really turning it around. And it could come today. They really pointed to this game. Hand off to Herman Hurd. He's a tough guy to stop. And look at Herman Hurd turn the corner. And he's down inside the 25-yard line. James Saxon, 21, with a terrific block. And Herman Hurd hooks up a big one. 17 yards for Hurd. And you're playing an offense like this. Here you see Herman Hurd taking the ball, tries to run off tackle. He gets through the line of scrimmage, and now he just does the rest on his own. He shows some speed, gets out there and turns that corner. But you, you get so much confidence when you're a running football team. You know you can always run the ball. And all of a sudden, your line starts to feel like if they can just hold the block a little bit longer, they can set one of these guys free, and they'll take it all the way. Well, so far, the Chiefs offensive line is certainly winning in this in the trench battle. First down and 10, Kansas City. Good throw to Emil Harry. But the pop is made in Nesby Glasgow. Flies on the three ball for a touchback. And the drive is stopped on a 17th turnover this season for Coach Schottenheimer's Chiefs. You see Ron Jaworski a little bit disappointed here. This is an excellent play. You got a Koya faking into the middle of Jaworski just laying that ball right on the line. And at, at this point, you just gotta you gotta cover the ball up. There's nothing worse at this point than turning the ball over. All of a sudden, all your efforts in trying to get down there and get some points on the board, and you end up giving the ball away like they've done the last three games. That's the bad news. The good news is this KC team won't quit. They'll go right attacking harder than they did before on defense. End up, Kurt Warner buys the middle on a first down play and gets to the 25-yard line. It was Vernon Maxwell, number 50, who was out of football last year, who made the hit that freed the ball from Emil Harry. Marty Schottenheimer is trying to teach this entire ball team that when one part of the team sags, the other team has to turn around and really play harder. The defense now has got to come and shut these guys down. It, it's it's whatever it takes to win a football game. Now, you can go with those stats as long as you want to, but you got to do whatever it takes to win. And that will do it for the first quarter as the Seattle Seahawks lead it 7-3 to three here at the Kingdom in Seattle. The first quarter numbers, you see the Chiefs with a 5-1 to one advantage in first downs and a big advantage in rushing and total yardage. They don't have return yards down there, and the opening kickoff was run back 97 yards by James Jefferson for the go-ahead touchdown. And with all those pluses done, their big deficit is four points on the scoreboard. 
the Hawks holding to a 7 to 3 lead. Second down and five comes up now for Seattle. They go to the power run, but there's not much there for John L. Williams as he's knocked down at the 27 yard line. John L. Williams didn't practice a lot this week. He had to go back to Palatka, Florida. His mother had gotten sick, but she's doing very well now. Nola Williams, and he said, you know, I took those days off and went back down. My mom was fine, but I think I got the most out of that because my legs feel a lot better now having missed that practice. He gets an awful lot of work. John L. Williams does it at every phase of offensive football. He runs, he catches, he blocks. He really is the center point of the Seattle offense along with the passer, Craig, who might be throwing now on third down in the long two. Comes the blitz. They pick up Thomas. Play down the run. He'll get the first down. Down to the 34-yard line. So Dave Craig gets ahead to the 34 for a gain of six yards on the play and a first down for the Seahawks. What I mentioned earlier about you got to do whatever it takes to win. Dave Craig is an excellent example of that. He's not into his statistics or how many yards he throws for. He is a winning quarterback that will do whatever it takes to win. And in, in defense of, of Dave, I must say that when people say that he's hot, he's been hot so long that we got to move that and stop saying he's hot. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And statistically of all time, he grades out the top four passers. Over the last 10 games dating back to last season, he's been unbelievable. A quarterback rating of 100 over that time. On first down, Craig fires a five-arm strike. Good for a connection after a 10-yard gain to Lewis Clark. Number 84, who might be the fastest Seahawks. Craig not able to throw the ball overhand, so he just reaches around and fires that baby sidearm. Chargers and Broncos tied up three all. Washington out in front of slumping Phoenix after the Cardinals got off to a 2-0 start. Rams looking to go 5-0 to open the season. We have a measurement now stopping the clock with 13-11 to play in the first half here in Seattle. It's such, it's such a long season, Don. It, it, it was funny. I was talking to some of the younger players before the game, and Brian Blake said last year they had played four preseason games and eight games into the season, and usually his college season was over. He said it was all he could do to just stay afloat the rest of the season. It's a long way to go, and a lot going to change. Certainly their heads already with Seattle. Team off to an 0-2 start. They look to be in big trouble. Now they're very much a contender to win their division again. Upbeat team playing its best football. And Dr. Warner, and he was caught in the backfield by the strong safety, Kevin Porter. Very tough safety from Auburn, just the second year, number 27. One of the things that they've started doing around the Seattle Seahawks team is talk about going to the Super Bowl. He see Kurt Warner this time, trying to find a hole, picking and choosing. Not find, can't find anything. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. But this Chuck Knox team, they've been talking about, hey, we have been close too many times. This year, we want to go all the way, and we have to make that commitment now. Well, that locker room speech of Kurt Warner after the second loss this season, I think, was the turning point in Seattle season because they've played well ever since. Again, Craig has the ball slapped back at him as the big rush of the Chiefs comes right up the middle on him, and there's nothing over the middle. Sally Amua, number 97, got a piece of the ball. He was looking for Brian Blades, who was just running a little stop pattern over the middle, but he was very well covered. Here, you watch it in the middle of your screen, right behind the referee. There's Brian Blades. Just no way you can get the ball to him. Freaks three for seven for 30 yards. Blades coming off a great game last week. I'm out. Seven catches for 120 yards and a touchdown against the Raiders. Blades says, I want to go to the Pro Bowl. I want to go to the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl. He's playing like that. He'll at least get in one. He's sure going to. Craig makes his time. Makes the throw in the connection. Rip the ball to Tony Tan. He's ahead for a first down. A 17-yard play as Seattle rips off a first down on third down and 10. A 17-yard gain down to the Kansas City 38-yard line. Very nice patience here by David Craig. He's looking down the middle of the field, trying to find a receiver. You see him looking everywhere. Now he comes down the middle of the field. Tommy Kane runs an excellent route, comes back to the ball, and able to slip one tackle and get a few more yards. Talk about the Super Bowl tonight. That was the thrust of... The speech by Kurt Warner that they have to have a vision, a goal, 
have to be on the same page in what they want the team game and they all responded to it and up to Williams on first down and he's down close to the 35 yard line on the stop was Dino Hackett number 56 bring up second down now and about six Don, I think it's a realistic goal for a team like Seattle at some point you got to start talking about it I mean a lot of guys go well you know we're taking it one game at a time you can take it one game at a time but you have to at some point feel like you're good enough and deserving enough to make it to the Super Bowl so you can talk about it just as long as you keep backing it up every single Sunday but the worst we said you've got to play it hard every week even the teams that have losing records are loaded with good personnel you're not at the top of your game you'll get beat one thing he's learned in his years in the league now the Seahawks go to the run Kurt Warner tries to dip outside on a very nice open field tackle made by Mike Junkin who's an interesting story he won one of the highest players drafted three years ago out of Duke he was picked by Schottenheimer at Cleveland had a fractured hand missed almost his entire first year didn't produce a lot of second year and the Browns traded him to Kansas City when Schottenheimer got the head job Schottenheimer still believes he has the potential to be a tremendous linebacker Schottenheimer loves these coaching projects because he is the type of coach that loves to coach Bill Cower, the defensive coordinator. Yeah, he builds players, there's no question. They have the raw ability. He'll refine it. Craig, on third down, has a drop ball that Lewis Clark had a dive at. And so, the Seahawks come up short on third down and nine, and they send out a kicking team now. Ruben Rodriguez is out to punt for a third time. Too long a try for even Norm Johnson. Ball well, just a little bit off target. Lewis Clark trying to make the catch, just not able to hold on to it. Had he caught it, I don't think it would have been a first down had he caught it. Johnson can hit him from this far. It'd be about a 58-5 yard attempt. I saw him in the pregame warm-ups kicking him from about 20 yards out with no step, just standing there swinging. Leg, yeah. <laughs> of course, that's without a rush. Rodriguez in to punt the ball. Ball is hit downfield. Pete Manley gets under it and lets it hop. And the Seahawks down at the one-yard line. Another standout special team play for Seattle. And so Kansas City gets the ball, but deep in their own end. Back at Seattle, where the Seahawks lead 7-3, to three, they oppose the league's anti-noise rule. <laughs> Ahmad is wearing one of the, uh, the Seahawks bills. It's a muzzle. See, the reason why I'm not real... Can you hear me? The reason they're not making a lot of noise here is they got these muzzles on. It's a, it's a beak, though, I think. And it's hot in here. Now the noise starts up. They saw him out up here with the beak on, and that inspired them to make noise. From the end zone, Jaworski takes a look. He throws, and it's, is it caught? It? it is. It was left on the field. I think they're going to rule it incomplete. Now the officials coming in saying it was a catch and he was down. So the Chiefs get out of jail at least a little bit from their own one after the six. Other people took those beaks off because they were making a lot of noise right here. Here's Jaworski trying to find a receiver knowing he's got to get rid of this ball. Just a little bit too much heat here. That's a pretty good catch. He has the ball in his hands right here. That's a catch. I know one thing, it's hot inside that beat. I don't know how these people can wear this thing very long. They, they all got it off now. They're picking up that decibel level. This has been proven to be the loudest stadium in football as the Koye takes a shot. That was Darren Como who popped in again. But you've got to hit him all day long, and he still comes hard. He thinks that these hard hits are just part of the game. It's like, okay, man, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back strong, too. We watch Darren Como come up and land it. Woo! Darren Como with the Koyas 3 and 5 reverse, 53. He almost turned the Koyas numbers inside out with that pop. 8.15 to go in the first half. 7 to 3. Seattle still leading after returning the opening kickoff. 97 yards for a touchdown. James Jefferson had a pass. Last possession, Chiefs were down close, but they fumbled inside the 5. The rookie throws it incomplete. He was going to Todd McMurray. A rookie offensive back from Temple. 
as the Glasgow was defending. And the putter, Kelly Goodburn, now comes out for Kansas City on a fourth down and two. And Rufus Porter, number 97, is putting a lot of pressure on the backside. You see him get around that tackle, and he's still coming at the quarterback. The worst be lucky just to get rid of that ball. Jaworski under a big rut. They are getting some heat on Jaworski after they've been on Craig. They used to hand out these duck bills like this when I was at the University of Oregon. They look just like these little muzzles, except they were duck bills instead of Seahawks bills. Part of that quack attack up there, though. Right. The burn will punt from his end zone. Gets away a long punt downfield. It drives David Hollis back to his 45, but he has blockers, not for long. As good special teams play by the Chiefs, sweeps him under at the 48-yard line, a 46-yard punt by Goodburn, a return of just four yards. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. By the First Brands Corporation, makers of Prestone Advanced Formula Antifreeze. And by Anheuser-Busch, we brew our fine quality beers to be enjoyed responsibly. Remember, no when to say when. The Hawks set to go now. First down and 10 at their 49-yard line. If they continue to lead the game 7-3, to three, but have not been close to points since that kickoff return to open the game. Kansas City with the number three defense in the entire NFL. throw downfield. Look at the coverage by the cornerback, Kevin Ross. He's right on Brian Blade, stride for stride. Throw was right there, but the coverage was perfect again for the Chiefs. They really are good about That Kevin Ross is, he may be the best defensive back to ever come out of Temple since Bill Cosby. Because, <laughs> <Right. laughs> I mean, he can play. And that, that's the only way you can beat that tight kind of coverage. You try to throw the ball up and give your receiver a chance to catch the ball before the defender can turn around and look back at it. Kevin Ross trying to show that he belongs in that Pro Bowl also. Albert Lewis has been there a few times. Deron Cherry's been there lots of times. And Ross is saying, I belong there too. Going like this, he's going to be there. Warner calls the Chiefs defense big, tough, no frills, no tricks. They can right after. Here's a throw. Albert Lewis was right on. But another excellent throw and a brilliant reception, a 32-yard game. David Craig to Brian Blaze, the second leader receiver from Miami of Florida. Great concentration by Brian Blaze because he was covered, and it was a great throw also by David Craig. Watch his ball fall right in there. Albert Lewis is right on him, just misses the ball, and Brian Blaze has a chance to just keep his eye on it and make the catch. You see him get on the front side of Albert Lewis, number 20 now. Now Lewis is trying to get up there and knock the ball away. Doesn't get a chance. Blades watching the ball all the way, catches it with his hands. 32 yard reception, and the Seahawks are on their way. Seahawks challenging now as they lead the game 7 to 3, 650 to play first half. John L. Williams comes it up. And he is cut down on a head on tackle made by the strong safety, Kevin Porter, at the 16 yard line. As we check the scoreboard, Chargers and Broncos still tied 3 all in the second quarter at Mile High Stadium. San Francisco leads New Orleans 3-0 in the second quarter. Rams in front of Atlanta in the second quarter, and the Redskins have extended their lead to 13-0 over the Cardinals. Second and six arises for Dave Craig and the Seahawks. They lead the game 7-3. Williams tries the center of the defense. Neil Smith was on the tackle. Bill Maz, the nose tackle, the stand out of that position, 63 for Kansas City, is playing off the ball more this year, Amat, to get a better read on where it's coming. He's not going to have as many sacks. He led them in sacks last year. As we have a Seahawk down now, looks like Edwin Bailey. Right guard, left guard. Edwin, it was going to be a big loss if Edwin Bailey's not able to return. He is one of their inspirational leaders. So a timeout while Edwin Bailey is attended to. Good to see that Edwin Bailey appears to be all right in the got up and walked off under his own power. Looks like he'll be back, but right now the 
Seahawks go to third down and three at the 12 yard line of Kansas City. Second quarter, 534 to play in it. Seattle holding to a 7 3 lead. And look at the throw, but they're going to rule it in the graphic for Pack. He got the ball away with a trick shot to John L. Williams. It's not going to count. Whatever it takes to win, that David Craig is looking for a way to get some. <laughs> Some positive yardage. He was great. Even though he gets in the grass, he's still looking to try to find somebody to throw the ball to. <laughs> he threw that one from his knees. Terrific second look. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. The producer of today's game is Terry Ewart. Director Ted Nathanson. We're coming to you from the King Dome in Seattle, Washington. Don Cricky with a mod Rashad as Norm Johnson will now try a 36 yard field goal. One of the NFL's best swings into the ball and drives it right through the middle. Two top kickers today. They both hit on their only tries from field goal range. And with that hit by Norm Johnson, Seattle extends the lead to 10 to 3. I guarantee you there's a lot of competition between these two kickers here today. I mean, their pride is on the line. Be a lot of competition tonight, too, as the National League Championship Series goes to Game 4 at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Where the Giants lead the Cubs two games to one. It's at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on NBC Sports, the Cubs and the Giants, the National League Championship Series tonight. 5.03 to go in the first half here at the Kingdom. The Chiefs right in the game from the outset. Their special teams gave up the big return. It went for a touchdown. That's been the only TD of the game. 10 to 3 is the score, Seattle. And talking about that baseball game, you know, I grew up out here in the Seattle area, and we had the Tacoma Giants when I was growing up, so I can't help but be a Giant fan. Nearby Tacoma. Yes. Interesting, on your way up, you saw your old high school football coach. That's right, Joe Stortini, third man in line. Soon he might be the governor before long. So we better get to know Joe then, huh? That's right. <laughs> Said you made him a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> Norm Johnson ready to kick it off now for Seattle after hitting his 36-yard field goal try. Long hit, high spinner downfield. It is taken by Danny Copeland, and he is upended as he gets to the 15-yard line. Big special team play again. Rufus uh, Porter, he's something. He, you know, this is, a, this is a little gymnastics here. Watch number 97, Rufus Porter. You think he wants that ball? Watch him break the wedge. Boy, I'm telling you, he's going 100 miles an hour. Whoa! <laughs> I like that. He is an exciting player. Made the Pro Bowl as a special teams player. He's unbelievable, this guy. He's on the way to making it again this year as a special team player. He's not a very big guy. And I, I always say he reminds me of Hollywood Henderson that used to play with Dallas. Same kind of guy, about 6'3", 220, and extremely fast and dangerous. And he goes flat out every single play. Never takes it down off. Now Jaworski goes back to Akoya, and he is ahead to about the 22-yard line. A gain of about four yards on the play, hitting into the left side of the Seattle defense. Akoya, no matter where the pile is, he always seems to come out the other end. You see a bunch right. of guys all pounded up in one side, and all of a sudden he comes shooting out the other side of it. Or he brings the pile right along with him. <laughs> He's a load, and he can carry a load. He astounded uh, all the players because he'd never lifted weights. He got in the weight room by the second week he was there. He's bench pressing 400 pounds. Uh, his nickname on the team is Big Mon. Big Mon. Very trim from the waist down. Tremendous power upper body. Chris Martin, one of the outside linebackers, said, if you don't hit him low, you're not going to bring him down. He said, he'll take you out of the game. He hits his shoulder so hard. Throw to the wrong side of tight end Chris Dressel, who caught that 20-yarder a short time ago. Eugene Robinson, veteran free safety from Colgate, was defending on the play. Akoya has not played enough football to know how to take it easy. Everything he's learned, you know, they tell you you got to block full speed, you got to run full speed. Well, that's exactly what he does. He hasn't played a long enough time that every now and then you might, you know, as long as you get the guy, you can take a little break. He takes no breaks at all. And gets a lot of work. Ten carries in the first quarter alone. Steve DeBerg is the backup. He started the season. 
deep with 12 interceptions in their first four games. It's been a killer. They had one turnover today, and it looked like they were going in. Jaworski gets time, but the rip, he's too high. Throwing downfield for Pete Manley, who had two steps on the defense. But Jaworski couldn't thread it and hit him, and so it's a punting down for Kansas City. Well, Ron admitted to us last night that he was a little rusty. He hasn't played a lot in a long time. But the more he plays, it starts to come back to him. Here he's got a receiver open, and he just puts the ball up just a little bit too high. But he just needs those reps. He needs to get in and play. He hasn't played in about three years. Here's a well-hit ball downfield that David Hollis will return for Seattle. Emily Marker's down. Looks like an illegal block against the Seahawks. 49-yard punt and a 12-yard return. Dick Hamtack, the referee. Emily Marker stopping the clock with 3.49 to play in the first half. 10 to 3 Seattle. Way to be. Illegal use of the hands on the defense, number 24, grasping the face mask. Five yards, first down. Has now moved out to the 45 yard line. Good news from the Seattle sideline Edwin Bailey just dinged on the plate, took a shot on the helmet, no injuries, he'll be back. Back to you. First down and 10 for Dave Craig and the Seahawks. out defense by Chris Martin, an outside linebacker from Auburn, number 57, who is coach Schattenheimer says is playing Pro Bowl quality football. He's been a standout all four games. Marty Schattenheimer says he's not only great against the run, but he can also cover. Here he just comes in and submarines John L. Williams and is able to trip up Kurt Warner on the play. Vikings cut him and came in as a free agent. In fact, all the linebackers here, other than Dino Hackett, three of their starting four, didn't play last year. Derek Thomas, a rookie. Walker, Lee Ashley, a free agent in. Chris Martin is a free agent. He didn't start last year. He played four games. Here's a throw and a catch by Lewis Park on second down and 11. But the gain is short. Now they're going to wave it off. Apparently they are really trapped it. It's, it's amazing to watch this Kansas City defense because David Craig has had time to throw the ball. It's just that there's nobody open. Dave's looking downfield trying to find one of his wide receivers. Nobody open tries to go underneath to the tight end. And it's just a drop ball. But these Kansas City defensive backs, they come right up in the face of the receiver. And you know that they got you man to man. There's no help deep behind them. It's just me and you, baby, as Albert likes to say. Only the standouts can play that man-to-man, -man, and the Chiefs do it down after down. Here's Craig on third down and 11. Let's the long ball go. Lee makes a diving reception at the 26-yard line. So Craig and Blaze team up on the improbable, and that is long pass connections against this Chiefs secondary. That was a 31-yard gain. The way that you get open on a man-to-man -man defense is that you miss the bump at the line of scrimmage, and then the cornerback has to follow you down the field, and he has no idea which way you're going to turn. And that's exactly what Brian Blade did. He got by the bump at the line of scrimmage, and at that point, Albert Lewis, number 29, was just following him, and then uh, David Craig threw the ball out in front of him. It's an easy play. The trick is to keep that receiver in front of you, and Albert Lewis hasn't been able to do that in Blade's situation. Blades had the step, and they made it pay. Now Craig looking again, fires over the middle, and the ball is incomplete. Here's a marker down, as it is ruled, and Albert Lewis fouls, and there's the quarterback down, too. Craig is hurt, but he's getting up. Hit hard, but there's a penalty marker against Kansas City inside the 10-yard line. Chris Martin being sent back to the defensive huddle, exchanging words. Somebody got a clean shot on Dave Craig just as he released the ball. We'll take a look again. I think it might have been Chris Martin, but he, he's a young fella. I don't think he'd be celebrating that much right in front of the lineman's face. 
Ishii David Craig lets the ball go. If this he lets it go, boy, he gets unloaded on by Martin. Boy, this Martin is tough. That was a clean hit. The penalty came on the coverage of Albert Lewis, who couldn't cover Blades again. You see Albert Lewis coming over the top of Brian Blades. He gets to him just a little bit before the ball gets there, and that's pass interference. Tagged down his penalty yardage. Blades with two receptions today for big yardage, 21 for the season. One of the AFC leaders. First in goal, Seattle. Hand up to Warner. Penalty marker down as Kurt Warner goes down at the eight-yard line. Chris Martin makes the play again. See what Schottenheimer's talking about him. This kid's in on every play. He certainly is. The legal procedure is signaled against the Seahawks. Offense, number 87, Penley is declined. Second down. So Chuck Knox sees a misfire in his offensive front. Legal procedure, and now it's going to be second down and goal. The ball position at the eight-yard line. Seattle not running what they want to do, Ahmad. No, only 33 yards rushing so far this half, but they'll take a they'll take it whenever they can get it. They can get into the end zone. The Hawks continue to lead with two minutes to go in the half, 10 to 3. Dave Craig said the last possible second, then paid the price. If you think playing quarterback's easy in this league, watch that lick right there that was put on Dave Craig, knocked his cheek pad out, and Dave Craig, being the tough quarterback that he is, goes, man, that's smart. Now the ball positioned at the eight-yard line of the Chiefs, second and goal for Seattle. Luke Pass off the hands of the tight end, Robert Tyler. Pretty good throw by David Craig. He threw it so the only person that could catch it was Tyler. Well, the only person that had a chance to catch it was Tyler. And the guy who really caught it was Craig once again. Watch, he just lets the ball go, and boy, that's Derek Thomas this time. He's really getting to know those outside linebackers very well this afternoon. Coming with that wide rush and keeping the heat on, Derek Thomas, who is coach of State, will one day dominate the game from his position. Three and a half sacks as a rookie in four games. Now it's third down and goal for Seattle. 156 to play in the first half. Seahawks lead 10 3. Here's a throw and a knockdown. Good D that time. Tommy Kane coming off the right flank, and Albert Lewis, number 29, the veteran from Grambling, breaks it up. So the field goal unit comes out now for the Seahawks. Brian Blaze was open right in the back of the end zone, but it was very easy for me to see from this vantage point. And I guess if David Craig was like 12 feet tall, he might have been able to see him too, but he already decided to throw that ball to Kane, and Kane in a lot of traffic. You just got to come up with that catch. You have no more chances. You got to realize the down and distance. It's your last chance to get in the end zone and just catch the football. Norm Johnson hit a 36-yard field goal. This will be a 26-yard try. On the way in automatic. And with 1.49 to play in the first half, the Seattle Seahawks extend their lead over Kansas City to 13 to 3. At halftime, we'll be going to NFL Live in New York for a recap and an update on some of the developments today. Marv Albert and OJ Simpson at NFL Live as Jim Kelly, the Buffalo quarterback. Went out of a loss at Indianapolis with a separated left shoulder. The extent of the injury not yet determined how long he'll be out. Brian Mover in what has been the AFC's highest scoring offense. It wasn't his throwing shoulder, which he had operated on as a collegian at Miami. Owen oh, Kelly, he get out there with one arm if he can do it. He would certainly try it. You want to talk about a quarterback with a linebacker's personality? That's Jim Kelly. Jaworski grew up about 10 minutes on the Bills home field. Rich Stadium where you played him out for a couple of years. That's right. I think Jaworski was in uh, junior high school or something. Nah, not really. He's only a couple years younger than I. Lackawanna, New York. That's right. I know it very well. Very nice part of the country. 
Yeah, you got to be tough to grow up in Lackawanna. There's a lot of Wannas. A Lackawanna. What's the other one they got? There's another one. Lackawanna. You got Chick to Walker. Chick to Walker. There you go. Salamanca. <laughs> Salamanca. Well, out here we've got Puyallup. <laughs> Is that how they pronounce that? Puyallup. I thought it was Talia. <laughs> it's Puyallup, huh? Puyallup. I've seen that. Sonoma. Sonoma. <laughs> Here's a high spinning kickoff downfield that the Chiefs will run back. Danny Copeland puts his head down, and he is not down at the 17-yard line. Again, good kick coverage by the Seahawks. Next Sunday, join NBC Sports for an NFL doubleheader beginning at 12.30 Eastern time with NFL Live. And it's a war by the shore of Lake Michigan as two of football's toughest teams match up. The Oilers go against the Bears in Chicago in the second half. The Chiefs will be in Los Angeles to meet the Raiders of Art Shell, or the Seahawks will head to San Diego to take on Jim McMahon and the Chargers. Check your local listings for the games in your area next Sunday on NBC Sports. Jaworski goes right into the shotgun on first down, just 146 to play in the first half. Comes it off. He's a little bit high, though, throwing the ball to Todd McNair out of the backfield. Chiefs, coaches all say, Amad, this defense has to keep them in the game because they're not going to win with big scores. They just don't score a lot of points. They've got to win close games. They've got that ball control offense where they, they you really got to be ahead in a football game in order for a ball control offense to be effective. Right now, they're behind. They've got to come out and pass it on. It's something that they're not real comfortable doing. This is a chance, you know, for the other team to get turnovers. And they put you in a position where you got to throw the ball down the field all the time. They'll be throwing it down the field now. Or will they? They go to a delayed draw, and the Seahawks are cool. Good D by Seattle. Jeff Bryant, 77, was on the play. So they shut it down. Well, we're talking about Kansas City's offense. They really are not at full speed, passing-wise. There you see Jaworski just handing it off, and Seattle snuffing it. But they had Stephon Page, who came in late to training camp. Carlos Carson has a pulled up growing muscle. As soon as these guys get well and they get a chance to work a little while with Jaworski, their passing uh, game has got to go up tremendously because Page and Carson are excellent. Yeah, they've got to have Carson. He's been their standout for 10 years now. But as you mentioned, hampered by a muscle pull that slowed him down. Jaworski gets an unusual amount of time, makes a connection, and it'll be close to a first down, but time is a factor now. We're inside of 50 seconds to play. And the Chiefs are allotted one of their three timeouts. Now the score remains the Seahawks 13 and the Chiefs 3. 49 seconds to go in the second quarter at the Kingdom in Seattle. Don Pricky with a mob shot. And now the Seahawks set back a punter. Punt returner as it's fourth down and three for Kansas City. Got a good burn, kicks the ball downfield and it's taken at the 37 yard line. And the Chiefs make the tackle at the 45. 36-yard punt, an 8-yard return on the play. Denver has now gone to a 6-3 halftime lead over the Chargers. New Orleans has come from behind and leads San Francisco by 7 at the half. Atlanta with a 10-point deficit to make up against the unbeaten Rams. And the Cardinals are on the board. They trail the Redskins by six points in the second quarter at RFK. Seattle with the only touchdown of this game on a 97-yard return of the opening kickoff by James Jefferson. Here's a throw in the flat. Caught by John L. Williams. Penalty markers down. If the play goes, it'll be good for a first down, but the markers down at the line of scrimmage. Legal motion is signaled against the Seahawks. They'll come back. It'll be first down and 15. If they're looking for a mismatch, the Seattle offense. Illegal motion. Offense, number 70, five yards. Repeat the down. First down. You got a better chance of trying to get one-on-one -on -one with Johnny L. Williams and, and Cooper than you do on the two outside guys. If you watch the upper part of your screen, you see Mattis leaving just a little bit ahead of time. And a lot of times, 
Derek Thomas being in front of you causes that infraction because you try to set up too quick because you know you got quickness in front of you. Madison's 305 pounds, but not nearly as fast as the man he has to block. To throw and a catch, it'll be good for uh, actually a loss on the play of a yard. Or they got four where they're spotting the ball. And so it now will be second down and over 10 yards to go for the first down. And another timeout on the field with 30 seconds to play in the first half. We see David Craig, he's got his wide receivers running it off deep. Then John L. Williams comes underneath the coverage, and Deron Sherry, being an excellent tackler, puts the cuffs on John L. Williams. Which isn't easy to do. Chuck Knox in his seventh year as the head coach of the Seahawks, his 17th year as a head coach in the NFL. Marty Schottenheimer and Chuck Knox go way back. They first met when Chuck was an assistant with the Lions in the 60s. And they both had a part in the movie Paper Lion. <laughs> <laughs> a part that uh, Chuck's was probably made it to the show. And Marty's somehow got uh, lost on the cutting room floor, he told us yesterday. He said he worked all day, took 30 takes, and went to the movie, took his girlfriend to the movie to see the movie, and couldn't find him still. It'll become, it'll be, <laughs> they get cut. He's told to bring his playbook, and he has to give a disgusted look. After 30 takes, he ended up on the cutting room floor. <laughs> That's really being cut. Downfield throw, Scanzi has it, takes a tremendous shot from Albert Lewis, but Scanzi holds down and he's up. 24 seconds to go in the first half, a 21-yard gain in the play. So the Seahawks call another timeout. Boy, this, that was a big hit there. Yeah, around. this is how you earn your money. This is a pro catch right here. Anybody can catch it with nobody around, but can you hang on to this after that lick? I can't. That's why I'm up here talking about it. You did it one time. That's right. Then I wised up. <laughs> Figured out there's an easier way. That was a great catch by Paul Scanzi. An ex-U Dub player, University of Washington. Now, see that arm. You don't want to. You don't want to rub it too quick. You got to wait a little while till the camera's off. You then you try to straighten that hurt out of there. Dave Craig picking up that yardage number, throwing the ball. Yeah, eight for 17, 133 yards. But I guarantee Stanzi would like to catch some easier balls than the last one he caught. Only one tar turnover in the game. And that was won by Emil Harry inside the five-yard line when he was hit hard, running a pass reception. Looked like he might go in for a score. Down there, Williams is inside the five and down to the 10, but the marker is down again. Dave Craig took another shot. If you're going to pass on Kansas City, you're going to pay one way or the other. Because they are coming after the quarterback. They've got such quickness on the corners that they're always close to the quarterback before he lets the ball go. Pass interference. Offense. Number 81. Chuck 10 yard penalty. Infuriated that his quarterback has taken these hits. Referee's number one job, number one assignment, is to protect the quarterback in the NFL. You see David Craig gets the ball away. Well, that's a little late. That was late. That's a little late there. He had the ball. The ball was out of his hand. You, you know what happens? It starts to take a toll, and you can't keep taking hits like that during the course of the game. It'll beat you right down. Just 18 seconds to play in the half. First and 20. Long ball. It'll be in on the one half to Brian Blades. Incomplete. And that brings second down and 20 with 13 seconds to go in half. Seattle continues to lead the game 13 to 3. On the kickoff return to open the game by James Jefferson of 97 yards and two Norm Johnson field goals, 36 and 26 yards. David Craig, I'm telling you, he's got one of them Billy Kilmer type attitudes. He does. He, he reminds you a lot of Kilmer. That's a good. Certainly does. He analysis. is. He is so. He's. He's like a linebacker, but he's just going to keep coming at you and keep coming at you. I guarantee you, his cheek is hurting him right now, but he won't deal with that until after the game. Well, he throws spirals. Kilmer used to throw it end over end, but he gets the job done. Another marker down. Stands and makes the catch down at the 20 yard line with seven seconds to play. But there are markers down at the line of scrimmage. Twenty-one yard play if it goes. Now the holding call is against the, uh, the Chiefs. 
a great pattern by Paul Scanzi, a great throw by David Craig. Craig still hanging in there. They're not going to, he will not be intimidated. He let this ball go. Scanzi running a great route. Great possession catch. Holy. Defense, number 24. Finley is declined. First down. J.C. Pearson was called, but with just seven seconds left, Seahawks turn it down. They'll take a try at short points. 37-yard field goal attempt. Exception goes much longer than the penalty call, so they'll get set up now for a third Norm Johnson try. He's been right on two for two. And is again. As with four seconds to go in the first half, the Seahawks now extend their lead to 16-3. to There's the owner of the team, Ken Berry. NFL Live coming up at halftime. And the highlight from this game will surely be at it. The 97-yard kickoff return to open the game. Marv Albert and O.J. Simpson standing by in New York. The Indianapolis Colts moving into a first-place tie with Buffalo in the AFC East by beating the Bills soundly and knocking their quarterback, Jim Kelly, out of the game today. In open season on quarterbacks, there's not much you can do to protect them, though, Ahmad, if they're clean hits, as we've seen Craig take today. When you start having guys come out of college like Derek Thomas, that sort of linebacker, you're going to get some hits on the quarterback because these guys are so quick, so agile, that they're, they're able to get to the quarterback just as he's releasing the ball, and that's a tough spot. I mean, how do you pull off? You know, you pull off, the guy pump fakes you. I really think that quarterbacks are, are in danger because of the type of linebackers that are coming out of college now. They're very hard to block. Yeah, and to get the job done as a quarterback, you've got to wait and wait till the last possible split second to release it for your receivers to get free. There's Derek Thomas. What a player. Fourth player picked <laughs> overall in the draft. Out of I, Alabama. Like I said to kick last time, I said, well, so what's the biggest adjustment? Waiting for him to tell me a bunch of stuff. He said, you know what? There is none. <laughs> <laughs> when you're good, you're good, right? <laughs> That's right. Norm Johnson. Squid kicks downfield. Out of the hand team picked it up. Sally Amua with a rare kickoff return. He's in there to split, lead the blocking. And so one second remains, and Jaworski is going to come out now at the offense and maybe put up a home run ball. Sally Amu a little lot, looked a lot like uh, Christian Okoye on that return. He did. He's as big anyway, <laughs> not as fast. 260-some pounds. Marty Schottenheimer said when he got his first look at the team in the May mini camp, that Okoye came in, they weighed him 262 pounds, they timed him. 448 for the 40 yard dash. But he never believed the guy that big could run of that speed. Well, I wouldn't want to try to tackle him. And he gets up to that speed in a hurry. He's yeah. not one of these slow guys. He's <laughs> awful quick. He's uh, at that 4 4 speed in the second step. It's not a rolling start. He is. A sec he's a sprinter type. Out of the block. And here goes the long ball downfield. Jaworski winds up, lets it fly. Six people go for it, and it's incomplete to end the first half at the 30-yard line. So the Seahawks with a very sound game, keep by outstanding special teams play. And right now, Chuck Knox's team is in command, leading 16-3. to After scoring on the opening kickoff of the game, a 97-yard return by Jefferson, and then on three Norm Johnson field goals, a 16-3 to game. NFL Live is coming up next as the score at Seattle, the Seahawks 16 and the Chiefs 3. You can't give those turnovers away. When you get in a uh, situation where you've got to score, this league is so even that you come out and you play for a chance to win the game. Well, Marty Schottenheimer knows that his team is being played out of that position. They don't even get to the point where they get a chance to win the game because they end up giving a turnover. So his job is just to keep all the guys fired up to keep playing hard, trying to get that chance again. As we check the late game scores, Marty Schottenheimer has a long-term commitment, though, at Kansas City, along with Carl Peterson, who is the president and chief executive officer of the team. They have already restored the fervor in KC. They're probably going to sell out next week against the Cowboys at Arrowhead. 
Carl Peterson was saying before the game they already have over 70,000 tickets sold. Between Carl Peterson and Marty Schottenheimer, these players know that if these guys are not getting the job done, there'll be new players in next week because they want to win now. They don't want to sit around for the next five years and talk about, well, if we can get some more draft choices. They want to win right now. And with a guy like Marty Schottenheimer and Carl Peterson involved, I got a feeling they're going to turn this franchise around. Well, as a veteran all-pro, Deron Cherry was telling us yesterday, Ahmad, he said that last year we'd come close in a lot of games. I think they lost seven games by seven points or less. And there's always, or there would always be words of encouragement about you're coming close, he said, but that wasn't good enough. He said, Marty, soft pedals or sweet talks, nothing. He's very <laughs> critical where there's need of criticism. His practices are very intense, very tough, but yet there's a very upbeat, optimistic feeling on the team. Marty didn't want to hear any of that seven games by seven points. That's seven losses. He's talking about winning, and he's talking about doing it right now. And in order to do that, they've got to do something with his offense. They've got to be able to move the ball down the field in a hurry. They have, as we mentioned earlier, a good young quarterback that's inoperative right now. He's on the injury list. Mike Elkins, a second-round draft choice. He was carefully scouted and drafted. They've had some drafting mistakes at Kansas City, as all their fans know, too, as quarterbacks in the last 10 years. Fuller didn't make it. Neither did Blackwell. Didn't even come close. He was the seventh pick overall. Pickoff return is out to the 18-yard line. A big back from North Carolina never made it. Ethan Horton. He was a high number one. That's expensive when you got high picks and don't make them pay. That's right. Here's a low pick that pays right here. It's Rufus Porter, number 97. How about a no pick? <laughs> That's right. But you can see he runs by blockers. It's very hard to block him because he gets back on the other side of him. He's always around the ball somewhere. McCoy out of the setback. You see him way off the line of scrimmage. A seven-yard drop. A lot of room to read. And he tries the left side of the Seahawks defense this time and again moves the pile on first down. Good for eight yards. It worked in the first quarter. When the Chiefs were right in the game, then they got away from it. It's just so amazing to see this guy come barreling up the middle, and you see big guys like Jeff Bryant in on the tackle, but once the play stopped, Bryant's on his back. I'm telling you, all that momentum goes forward. Big man has almost doubled the rushing yardage of the Seahawks, but the bottom line number is very much for Seattle as they lead the game 16-3. to The worst yet quarterback, Mike Webster, the nine-time All-Pro with the Steelers, is at center. Koye, right off the right side of his offensive line, Irv Eatman and Dave Lutz lead the blocking there, along with the tight end, Jonathan Hayes. Darren Como makes his eighth tackle of the day for Seattle, number 53. Darren Como's lucky that somebody else got a little piece of him before he got in. Here's Como taking on the blocker, and then all of a sudden, as he's taking, and this is what happened, as he's taking on the blocker, trying to get rid of the blocker, all of a sudden, Koye comes up and gives him another shot. That's what those linebackers don't want to see there. KC finally got a first down amount. The first time they've had a first down since the first quarter. And the ball is positioned at the Chief 32-yard line. Seahawks leading at 16 to 3. Akoya, room to run. He really protects the ball. Did have some fumble problems in his first year. He's coming off two straight 100 yard rushing games. His first year, he used to have trouble with how to hold the ball. He'd end up holding it, you know, with the point up and down, or he'd hold it like a bread box. And now you're watching, he wraps that ball up really well. But here he takes a shot, a low shot on his knees. And that's, you got to get below his knees to try to get him down. So uh, the Chiefs fullback is attended to. There's a break in the action with 13.08 to play in the third quarter. NBC sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Coors Light. Pure brewed in the Rockies, the silver bullet won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Levi's 505 and 506 jeans. We're back and set to go. Second down and one now for Kansas City as the Chiefs are going to their run offense and moving the ball. Jackson is in as the tailback. He gets it. He weaves and he dives ahead to the 45-yard line for a first down for the Chiefs. 
You know, their game plan works them out. They got away from it, but they're right back to controlling the game, even though they've got a lot of points to make up. And the trick that they just have to make it pay, in, pay off on the other end. Here you see Mike Webster, even though he's uh, as old as I am, he's doing a heck of a job out there against Joe Nash, number 72. But it, this offense has to pay off on the other end. It doesn't do any good to be able to get all those yards in the middle of the field. You've got to take it on down and punch it in. Okoye's got 15 rushes for 74 yards, but none of them close to the goal line. The sideline report as he took a shot to the head, but his all right, we'll be back in there shortly. Nice fake by Jaworski, swings it out. Emil Harry, you'll remember, he fumbled the last time he had it. This time, two arms on the ball, and he's at the Seattle side of the field down to the Seahawks' 37-yard line. A gain of 18 yards on the play. And a great fake by Ron Jaworski before rolling out and delivering this ball to Harry. I think somebody said something to him about holding on to the ball because he was running like a courier once he got down there in traffic. Interesting development at Mile High where the Chargers have come from behind to lead the Broncos. If Seattle should win this and the Chargers pull an upset at Denver, there'd be a three-way tie for first in the AFC West. Seattle, Denver, and San Diego would all be at three and two. There are no weak teams in the NFC. We're talking about the balance. It becomes more and more evident every week. The score today indicate that. There's a throw and a catch up the middle. James Saxon, a tough runner out of San Jose State, protects the ball and gets another first down for Kansas City as they mix the run and the pass and move the ball against the Seahawks here in the third quarter. James Saxon, a lot like James Brooks of Cincinnati. Here you see him take that play fake up the middle. But once he gets the ball, he's got some left, right, left, right for him. A little quickness there. And those are the kind of things that this offense has to do just to keep going towards the goal line. You can loosen them up that way. Dave Wyman, the linebacker from Stanford, was going to stand out in his three years at Seattle. Made the play, but well downfield as the Chiefs are now challenging. They trail 16 to 3. Okoye, room to run. Bang, he goes into the middle of the Seahawks defense and takes it down to the 16 yard line. Eugene Robinson, the free safety in the last line of defense, made the stop. Christian Okoye, the Nigerian nightmare. And this is why, they, is. This is why they call him. Watch, he finds that hole and he just starts to turn it on. I mean, and everybody is just flying out of his way when he goes forward. That's his 16th carry for 82 yards. Nesby Glasgow, the veteran strong safety going out. An ankle twist. Game clock, 9.49 to play, third quarter. Second down and two coming up for the Chiefs at the 18-yard line of the Seahawks. Okoye, a loose a tackle, but not a second one. Grand down play. Tony Ward, 57, made the stop. Former number one draft choice from Pittsburgh, an outside backer for the Seahawks. And Jacob Green, number 79, using his quickness, gets by Herb Eatman and forces this play outside. Now, Okoye tries to reset, but here comes Woods, and he makes the stop. But Jacob, the quicker of the two between him and Irv Eatman, Eatman the stronger of the two. Eatman with a great ability to run by the size from UCLA. 6'7", 295 to 300 pounds. Now Jaworski wants to make sure they get it right on third down and three with this their best opportunity since that early fumble. And he calls a timeout to get some counsel on the sidelines. So the Seahawks come out and are ready to challenge for perhaps a touchdown here in the third quarter when we come back. Game four of the National League Championship Series tonight on NBC Sports at 8 o'clock Eastern time. The Cubs and the Giants in candlestick. The Oakland A's are out in front of Toronto. Two to nothing in the fourth inning. Oakland with a win today would take the American League Championship Series four games to one. Throw and a catch. Nicely done as Pete Manley goes low to the ground, picks up the ball, and gets the first down. So a very important throw there, Ahmad, by Ron Jaworski. Good for the first down. Always able to keep that pressure on the defense. Here you see Jaworski faking to Okoye and just firing this ball out to the sideline to Manley. This crowd, is, they started to do the wave here. It starts just in one section, and 
it, it started to make its way all the way around. But these people get so serious about the raid. You should see them leaving the stadium after the game. They're sweating and tired. And... Well, they can get loud as they are right now. First down and 10 from the 13-yard line. Lewarski again plays faking. There's a throw. He's got an open man, but the pass was Aaron. Chris Dressel was open in the end zone, but Jaworski was low. Rollout called play. He froze the Seattle defenders with the play fake and then rolled out. Had plenty of time to shoot. Certainly did. You see with Jaworski coming out here. He's looking for his tight end in the middle of the field. He's wide open. Jaworski just can't get enough on that ball to make it catchable. And these are the kind of things. It gets so hard to get the audience down here inside the 20 that when you get a chance like that, you got to get the ball in the end zone. Dennis Manishin pointing out that this is a fifth first down in the drive for the Chiefs. They had only five in the first half. They need a touchdown, though, down 16 to 3. A lot of time left. 7 to go third quarter. Second and goal. Okoye blasting up the middle. Look at this power into the end zone, standing up. <laughs> Got him out. Of covering his <laughs> eyes in disbelief. My goodness. That is something to see. Oh, my God. Yes. 13 yards. This is. Oh. We could watch this all afternoon over. This is just, unbelievable. This is. He was mugging people. He ran over. Hey. Just no, wait. Look out. Get out of the way. Oh, look out here. Another one. Let me knock him off me too. That's smelling the goal line. Now watch a Boy, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anybody else he can run over before he gets in there? So many of the great power backs, you don't hit him, he hits you. <laughs> the extra point is good by Lowry, and some news when he misses. Yep, it's news. But there's a knocker down. He's coming left early. No sooner said it's automatic, and they never get it off. But Dwayne Harper might have jumped the gun. False start on the center of the offensive team. Five yard penalty. One try. Ball start before the snap, so it's a big, big break for Kansas City. He'll get another try now, will Nick Lowry. Jaworski to Holder. He hit in front of his foot, it looked like a mile, and Lowry would have had to kick his foot. I, I think the Seattle defense is still in shock from that truck that just <laughs> ran through right. all of them. That was one of the greatest runs that I've seen in quite some time. When you do that in basketball, they call you a human highlight film. I'd say that the Nigerian nightmare is just that. And he's over there smiling, saying, how many guys do they have on that team? Because I think I missed two of them. <laughs> Absolutely one of the most charming people you ever meet off the field. Hey, what a load on it. Boy, he plays, he plays the game hard. I want to see them running again after this. <laughs> so the Chiefs looking to come within six with 7.53 to play in the third quarter. As they really execute a well done drive and now on a drive that's up and good. The Kansas City Chiefs have rallied for the first score of the third quarter and they trail in the game by just six. Kansas City with a drive built around Christian Okoye, who has now up to 93 yards for the day. He took the last 13 in on a power play up the middle, and the Chiefs are right back in the game, trailing 16 to 10. Here's James Jefferson, who ran back the opening kickoff of the game, 97 yards for a touchdown, and he turns the corner again. Marcus are down now, looks like an illegal block. Thirty-nine yard return, but a holding call signaled by referee Dick Hantak, and so the big return comes back, and the Seahawks will have the long field to go from scrimmage. Interesting about such holding huh? on a return, number ninety-one, ten-yard penalty, first down. Holding on the return. We'll see it again here. Right in the middle of your screen, you see number ninety-one just getting wrapped up. Darren Miller getting wrapped up there and he's got an obvious hole which nullifies a 39 yard run back by James Jefferson. Mentioning I saw Tom Flores the general manager of the 
We'll watch it again, Christian. And we're going to tell you about Tom Flores. It does take some time. Christian, this, this didn't is take a lot better than <laughs> the conversation at halftime. But I asked him about Art Shell, how he felt about that. He said it's great for Art Shell. He said he's really jumping on the hot seat, but he said he got the job with the Raiders, his first head job. And for Cohen Kitchen made to the 33 yard line to Brian Blades. Seahawks come right back with a 21 yard gainer. But he said, you never know you get the job if you can do it. He said, I'm sure Art Shell is chomping at the bit to get his shot. Well, you know, good players make good coaches, so it's not going to be all in his hands. The player's got to play, and this player right here, Brian Blake, is showing. When I talked to him yesterday, he said, you know what? I said, you had a great game last week. He said, I'm going to have a great game every week because I want to go to the Pro Bowl. He keeps beating Kevin Ross, who's one of the best in the business. Shoot, he's a shoe-in. They got a number one draft choice in the second round when they drafted Brian Blades out of Miami of Florida. Markers are down, and so is Kurt Warner on a first and ten carry from the 33-yard line. Neil Smith, number 90, made the knockdown right at the line of scrimmage. But there was an offside against the Chiefs, and so Seattle will get first down and five. Interesting play call now for quarterback Dave Craig. Marty Schottenheimer saying, next time we got defense number 90 five yard penalty repeat the down first down I was reading Marty Schottenheimer's lips he was telling Ron Jaworski that next time they get the ball give the ball to a <laughs> Well, you see how it opens up the passing game they say you can't pass unless you can run and Jaworski was free just play faking when he threw to a right down the field for a touchdown Craig to John L. Williams on first and five, and he's ahead for very close to first down yardage. He got to the 42-yard line just short of it. Chargers continue to lead the favored Broncos at Denver. New Orleans up by seven on the 49ers in the third quarter at the Superdome. Phoenix has now rallied from 13 points behind to lead the Redskins by a point. The Rams need a return by Neon Dion. It is really tough in this league, and everybody has a chance. It's the teams that realize that you're always going to be in the game. You just have to make sure that you make the plays to win the game, and that's something Kansas City has not done. Seattle's done it a little bit better today. Diving over the top, there's a free ball, and the Seahawks get it back. Ryan Blaze has done it about every way you can, catching three big passes for Seattle, all for first downs, and now coming back to get the free ball. And Schottenheimer smacking his hands. He we knows, kick it off and it goes their way. He knows that that's the kind of thing that's been happening to his team, except the other team recovers the ball. Here they get a chance. You see Kurt Warner trying to dive over the top of the first down. The ball shoots out. There's two Kansas City Chiefs around, but Blades, being the heady ball player that he is, comes up with the recovery. As stated earlier, this Chief defense, no matter what the score, plays every down like it's Armageddon. Everything they've got, every down. Now it's third and six. Here comes the blitz. Dave Craig in trouble. And he dumps it off to John L. Williams. And he's caught and knocked down in a big play by cornerback Albert Lewis, number 29. Yeah, if Williams had broken that tackle, he'd have had a long way to run. But Derek Thomas, 58, put the heat on Dave Craig. Dave Craig did an excellent job. Here you see Ron Mattis trying to hold out Derek Thomas. Craig makes a nice little step to the outside, gets the ball off to John L. Williams, and you see why Albert Lewis goes to the Pro Bowl every year. He's not only a great cover man, but a great open field tackler. Any other cornerback, I think that John L. Williams would have just went right by them. Williams with great power, 225 pounds, and now Manley's back to return the punt. So the game has really turned in Kansas City's way in the third quarter, an end over end punt. It's short, tough for Manley to handle. High hop, he gets it in his 28. Starting and dancing. Moving and grooving out to the 34-yard line. A 36-yard punt and a 6-yard return. And the Chiefs are ready to go on offense again. Long after the game is over, NBC Sports is still on the line. Dial 1-900-226-8000 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Back at the Kingdome, the Seahawks are in the lead. By a 16 to 10 score, Don Cricky with Ahmad Rashad as Tom Flores, the general manager of the Seattle Seahawks, looks on. A man who was greatly thrilled at his former teammate, Archell, 
got the job he wants, Al, as head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders. What about that appointment of mine? Was it historic? It was certainly overdue. Uh, it's certainly overdue, Don. I think what we do have to do is congratulate Art Shell in getting the job and also congratulate Al Davis in making a move that it's important how well a man does his job not to color his skin. Hopefully that, that sends a message throughout the National Football League and, and all of a sudden now they can start hiring people because they can do the job and not because of what color they are. Well, I think the best summation I've heard, there's been so much said and written about Art Shell getting the Raiders job. The best summation was when we talked to Tony Dungy yesterday, defensive coach of the Chiefs, who was has been rumored for many years to be a candidate as a head coach, as a black head coach, and he said what he hopes most of all, that color won't be an issue. Does he do the job or doesn't he? And you point to the major league managers. They talked about Cito Gaston at Toronto and Frank Robinson at Baltimore. But now instead of black managers, they're co-candidates for manager of the year after this season. That's exactly right, Dan. The, 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 the question is, can you do the job? You don't want to beat this to death, but I mean, for how many years have black quarterbacks couldn't play? Now you got two of the best in football in Randall Cunningham and Warren Moon instead of black quarterbacks are now Pro Bowl quarterbacks. It's very interesting. I watched a Little League game here before the game. Two black quarterbacks. When I was playing Little League, if you were black, you weren't going to play quarterback, that's for sure. So things are changing. Took a while. 2.46 to go in the third quarter. Jaworski on third down, lets it fly and makes the connection for a first down. Ron Jaworski paid the price. He took a hard hit, and he delivers downfield. Stefan Page with the third down reception for a first down. <laughs> Rufus Porter still going 100 miles an hour. He, he knows no other speed, but if you had any question about Jaworski's arm, I think he answered it right there. Jacob Green talking about Rufus Porter. This is the first time he joined the team. I said, who is this guy? Here he's there. He's all over the field. What yeah. planet is he from? <laughs> Herman Hurd takes the ball to midfield on a first down carry. As Kansas City's offense has come to life here in the third quarter. They've controlled the ball virtually the entire third quarter, and they have the only score of the third quarter, and they now trail by just six, 16 to 10. Joe Pendry is back to you now at the headset on. He's the offensive coordinator of the Chiefs. He was with Coach Schottenheimer with the Browns. They've got the same sort of offense that they had with the Browns. Instead of Kevin Mack back there, they got a Koya. And this offense is going to do nothing but get better and better. As soon as they get all the people helping. Second down and six. Okoya, look at this. Busting it open and kick. Down to the 28 yard line. He's over 100 yards for the day with a 21 yard carry. You know what? Those cornerbacks weren't in a hurry to come up there and try to make that tackle. 20 un 21 carries a day for 120 20 yards. That last one for 22 yards, and boy, that now this is the epitome of the nightmare. Watch Akoya once he gets the ball, he is wide. Now, if you're a defensive back, what do you do? Uh, I mean, how do you tackle him? Watch Eugene Robinson. He tries to put a big hit on him. Does an excellent job. I notice that Harper conveniently gets blocked by Payne. 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. Kansas City on the move again. Hand off to James Saxon, who's down to the 25-yard line. But Darren Tomo knocks him down. And that will do it for three quarters of play as Okoye gets a little fuel. Load up that tank. Man is running on empty. He's had the ball so much, but he'll be right back in there in a moment as the Seahawks have the lead, but the Chiefs are on the move again. Next Sunday in the first half of an NBC Sports doubleheader, the Oilers and the Bears hook up by, at Soldier Field in Chicago. Both in ill humor. Houston went into New England favor today and was beaten badly. The Bears went into Tampa Bay and gave up 42 points, losing 42 to 35. Chicago's first loss of the season. There are the numbers through three quarters of play. 
the yards. Chiefs with a decided advantage now as they're up to 150. Look at that disparity there, Ahmad. 155 to 24 and running. It's one of those things that Marty said when things get tough is when people start to question what you're doing. And that's the stability he wanted to bring to this team. If it starts getting tough, we just got to stay with what we've got and do it a little bit better. And that's exactly what the Chiefs have done this second half. Yes, Marty, what his first order of business was, he said he had to readjust the attitude. And you don't think in terms of playing well, but maybe losing out of the end. You think in terms of winning every game you play. Toye, both hands on the ball, breaks through again. As now it's almost become big man against Pop Warner League as these Seahawks are getting blown apart by this rushing game. 14 yard run, McCoy up to 134 yards for the day. One thing that certainly helped Marty is adding that little latitude to this team's attitude because here comes Akoya and boy, he is bringing it. Eugene Robinson, number 41, has seen quite enough of the Nigerian nightmare. Eugene's still giving it his best shot, but you hit Akoya hard. And you're not going to win. Tom Catlin, defensive coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks, looking on as the Chiefs drive on. It could be a go-ahead score. They're getting the end zone up time again with the extra point to put them ahead. This time, they come shooting. Tony Ward got the gap. Dave Wyman was also in as they came in on a slant blitz against the run and hit Akoya in the backfield, second down and 10. Akoya is obviously a little bit winded, a little bit tired at this point. But the thing that makes him such a, a great back is that he, he runs so flat-footed under the ground. He runs very strong. He's not one of these guys that gets caught off to the side. He's always on, the, on his balance. But I think right now he's just a little bit windy. I mean, he has definitely been the workhorse here the entire game. They give him a blow, and when he comes back in there, he'll be dangerous. He's coming with a game plan to run right at the Seattle defense. They've been doing that. Saxon Herder now in the backfield. Play fake, don't pass off. And it's completed to Saxon, who somehow finds a way down to the 10 yard line. Second and 10 play is good for only two. Very strong defense by the Seahawks. They read the ball and made the play. Jacob Green ran it down. This Seattle defense, what they've been able to do is bend but don't break. Here they get extremely tough down here inside the 20 yard line. You see Saxon putting a nice move on Eugene Robinson, but the Seahawks swarm all over him. It seems to me the only guy that they can't stop is Christian Okoye. He was out for a brief respite on the last play. Big down now. As you see the current drive of the Chiefs, 56 yards in eight plays. Third down and nine coming up from the 10 yard line. And Jaworski calls a timeout. Remember the last time they were down close, he called a timeout on third down and made the play, made the completion for a first down. Right now, these messages from your local station. Checking the scoreboard, San Diego now in the fourth quarter, continuing to lead the favorite Broncos. The Chargers going for their third straight win. The Niners and the Saints tied up in the fourth quarter at New Orleans. And it's continuing to lead, as does Phoenix by a point. Third down and nine at the 10-yard line. Jaworski throws. He's got a man, but the pass is at the eight-yard line. Short of the first down. Big play by Eugene Robinson. Made the tackle on rookie Todd McNair coming out of the backfield, number 48. Jaworski here looking for McNair, but watch this great tackle by Eugene Robinson. Boy, that's that hitting service. He hits and wraps his arms. There's no way he's advancing that ball any further. Great tackle. I get you. Robinson probably. You know, getting a chance to hit somebody other than Akoya, he unloaded on that guy. Now Lowry will fire a 25-yard field goal. If he hits it, it'll bring the Chiefs to within three. And he hits it, and Kansas City with points on his last two possessions, actually his first two possessions of the second half, now his back within three, down 16-3, to three, the closest the Chiefs have been. In this half, Kansas City's had about 20, 21 plays. Seattle's only had four. Another interesting point, though, is that Jaworski making some very uh, calculated third down timeout calls to make sure he's right, but he's only left with one timeout. I guess they figure at this point it's so important for them to try to get points on the board that they risk those timeouts to make sure that everybody's on the right page. 
And we take this opportunity to remind you that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Seattle Seahawks and the National Football League is prohibited. Don, I really think that Marty Schottenheimer saying that he's trying to adjust the attitude on this team is really the key <laughs> to getting this ball club to win. Well, he's a, you know, he took over a team at Cleveland when he got the job there when Sam Rotigliano was fired. They won one and lost seven the first half of the season. The next half, the last eight games, he was four and four. In the next four years, he had playoff teams. I mean, he got his head job shot, and he really made good. No question, Marty Schottenheim is a winner. Kickoff by Lowry downfield, and a very dangerous James Jefferson tries to run it back again. Look at that hit. Head on shot put on by Todd McNair, number 48. He just caught the pass in the third down try two plays ago. He's got a chance to deliver the payback in a hurry. You see Jefferson looking for a place to run, but here comes McNair saying, no, you are down right here. Inside the 20, a plus hit for the kick coverage when you get him down inside the 20. 11.43 to play in the game. Seattle holding to a three-point lead, but they've been virtually powerless to move the ball here in the second half. If they go to the run and try to run the clock. the running game. They go right to the air. Long ball. Brian Blades is intercepted by Deron Sherry. They all close inside the 20. He's inside the 10. And Deron Sherry's going to be spotted out of bounds. They're right around the 10-yard line. A 27-yard return. This game has turned so quickly as the defense follows up the good play by the chief offense. One bad decision by David Craig, and they played right into Jer Jerry's arms. I'm sure Craig thought that it was man-to-man -man defense, but Jerry was back there playing a loose zone, and he just played the ball and picked it off. You see Dave Craig, he thinks that his receiver has Albert Lewis beaten, and as he throws the ball up in the air, then Deron Cherry sees it and makes a nice play, and he has done this to so many quarterback in the league and he's done it quite a few times to David Craig seven times in his career it's first and ten just outside the ten yard line they could conceivably make another first down and off to Herman Hurd and he's down to the four yard line Darren Como who tackled him said for some reason Hurd plays just standout football against us every time a small tough runner from southern Colorado Number 44. Certainly helps when you got those big, huge 300 pounders in front of you just big knocking bird. people off to the line. Come out, here's the man coming in. That's the big man. We big are, bird. there's 76,000 in this building who know the play call. <laughs> and there's 11 there. That's right. <laughs> and they're all in blue. Jeans. They know it too. <laughs> and they stop it. Second down and jumped over four for a touchdown. Just about four, and it is to Okoye, and they get him as he's down to the three-yard line. Third down comes up. Big, big play. Kansas City left with one timeout. Lock running with 10 minutes and 38 seconds to play in the game. The Chiefs trail the Seahawks by three. And the Seahawks do an excellent job here of just clogging up all the holes and giving him nowhere to run because if you can keep him from getting his stride, then you got a chance of stopping him. If he gets two or three steps going forward, then what happens is you end up on your back. And if you end up on your back and just on the field, it's a touchdown. Crowd noise is way up. Jaworski. Jackson in motion gives to Akoya. He crashes down close, and he's down to the goal line. He's in. Akoya broke the plane of the goal. The linesman comes in and says, oh, touchdown with a protest of the Seahawks. And Akoya with two touchdowns in the second half has given Kansas City the lead for the first time. Okoye running as if he takes it as a personal challenge. I dare you to stop me from getting it. That's an excellent play. Yep. Excellent play by Okoye, who has not played a lot of football, but he knows what that goal line's all about. Watch here, Okoye, he gets stopped short of the goal line, 
He's running the one, two, three players. And right at this point, as he gets ready to go down, he just stretches ahead and puts the ball across the goal line. You're going to look at it again now. Make the decision maybe that maybe his knees were on the ground when he stretched the ball over. But the interesting thing about it, it, it looks like he got the first down even if he didn't get it in. You see that red marker at the top oh, of your screen. Uh, that knee's not down. The knee's down He's now. Got the first down, though. The barnyard cry. Akoya, once again, he's, boy, he's powering forward. Looks like his knee's down right there, but he reaches the ball over the goal line. So the pressure is now on the replay booth. Oh, they're trying to hide. Well, there they are. Don Anderson, former PR director of the Seattle Seahawks, there on the phone. Do you think that's where Gary Wright will be someday? He's the outstanding PR man for the Seahawks today. Is that where you go when you retire as a Seahawks PR man? No, no, Gary, Gary Wright may be the president. Okay, all right. When he finishes. We'll promote him to that. I think they have reversed it. Yeah, but if it goes to the one foot line, I think it's a first down. That's, that's going to be interesting. This drive started just outside the 10. The spot will be all important. Now let's see where they put the ball. Now they're walking over to the end. This is, we're going to leave this in the hands of the officials. He's going to check and see if he's... Oh, they're measuring for the first down now. Oh, yeah. I think he's... These officials, boy, they exactly what? Got it by the nose of the ball. This is going to be as close as they get. Either a first down and goal for Kansas City. That's what it is. After further review, it has been placed, the ball has been placed on the one foot line. However, it is a first down. Big development. They didn't get in, but they got four cracks at it now. And it might just only take one. Once again, you see Akoya pounding in there, number 35, and his knees on the ground right there, but he still keeps his head about him and tries to stick that ball over for the touchdown. I think it's a very well done job by the official. Excellent job. He wasn't in, but he was close enough. So now the Seahawks defense digs in. Power football with Akoya, the setback waiting for the ball. Destructed again. Did Jaworski get it back? A dilemma on every down. And it appears that Kansas City's Jaworski got the ball back. It's Dave Lutz who came up with it, number 72. Was that a big play for the Chiefs as they almost self destruct again? Just on the snap of you got all that experience in there with Mike Webster and Ron Jaworski, and they make a mistake there. There's and the only thing a coach says between us two is like, you two just get it together. Whatever happened, don't let it happen again. Well, it's not a team problem. That's just two guys. Second down and goal. Kansas City looking for the go-ahead touchdown. Play fake. Throw. Catch. Touchdown. It goes to Alfredo Roberts, the second-year tight end from Miami of Florida for two yards and a touchdown as the whole D of Seattle was looking at a coy end with good reason. And so Jaworski play fakes and throws for the touchdown and the Chiefs have taken the lead. 19 to 16 with a most important extra point coming up. If it's good, of course, they lead by four with 927 to play. Everybody, like you said, Don, looking for a coy to get this ball and rightly so. And here we'll see Jaworski just fake to Akoya. And this is one of the toughest balls to ever catch. When you're wide open like this, you got a long time to think about it. You really got to look that stuff right into your hands. <laughs> That's right. Rumpy used to say the only thing you were worried about is that you go blind while it's on the way. <laughs> NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right.
by Coors Light. Pure brewed in the Rockies, the Silver Bullet won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. And by Allstate, we're committed to building a car insurance system everyone can live with. Seven to go after the interception by all pro Duran Cherry. The Chiefs take it in on a touchdown throw. Jaworski to Alfredo Roberts. Roberts' first NFL touchdown. Now to kick off again to Jefferson, who's going to be knocked down to the 22-yard line. Here's that TD throw again, Ahmad. This will be one of the toughest catch that Alfredo Roberts has ever attempted because when you're wide open like this, you have nothing else to think about but catching, <laughs> catching the ball. And it seems like it's up in the air forever. You notice he has his feet together, knees together, everything in case it gets through those hands. Very important margin with the extra point, four points, because Seattle's offense has not scored a touchdown on Kansas City today. Their touchdown came on the opening kickoff return by Jefferson. Look at the first down disparity here in the second half. As Craig is in trouble, gets it away, a good throw, makes the connection, a hard throw to tight end Robert Tyler. Good for a gain of eight yards on first down. First down, Kansas City's got 11, Seattle's only got one. But something that's even more importantly, talking about their offense, I think mean, David, uh, Kurt Warner's carried the ball seven times for one yard. He has been null and void. And he was so good last week. Carried it 11 times in the fourth quarter alone in the comeback against the Raiders. And now Seattle's in a situation where they've got to throw the ball down the field. The home team, as mentioned, has won this meeting the last 13 times. Chiefs haven't won here in Seattle since 1981. John L. Williams carries on second and short. See where the spot is. It's going to be just about the 31-yard line. A bit short of the first down. It'll be third and very short yardage. Third and less than one with 8.20 to play and the clock running. Seahawks led at halftime 16 to 3 and now find themselves down at 20 to 16. Quarterback comparisons there. Jaworski 104 yards. Greg 188. Like the shotgun on third and one. Our pattern Blades dives at the ball and he appears to have the first down yardage. Brian Blades, whose brother Benny was a consensus All-American at Miami and the uh, third player picked in the draft last year. He plays strong safety for Detroit. Brian Blades now looking like an all-pro player, too. At Detroit, they claim that Benny is already. Nice route here. He leans into the cornerback and just sort of breaks it out and makes sure it's a possession catch. You got to just make sure you get the first down. Don't take any chances trying to scoop it and turn around and run. Just get the first down, and Blades does that very well. Adam, that was his third first down catch of the day. Four receptions for 85 yards. Craig on first down. Stands in. Sidearm throw. And it's picked up and caught by Stanzi for a gain of eight yards. Sidearm throw. Stanzi feels it just off the artificial turf. Game clock still runs. It's down to 650 in running. David Craig will find a way to beat you. He can't fire the ball over and He steps up into the pocket. Finds his receiver and just fires that baby sidearm. Another look at David Craig. And he's going to step right up inside the rush. He got a receiver over, throws it right up underneath the arm and a defensive tackle. Teammate got him the master innovator. Dave Craig, he finds a way and he'll have to now as Donnell Williams turns wide. He's picked up. Short, he didn't get the first down. Had he eluded that tackler, Neil Smith, he might have gone a long way. Martin was also on the play. Chris Martin, the free agent linebacker who shot Hunter says his Pro Bowl player. Great play by Neil Smith turning that ball, trying to turn the ball back inside. It, it's just amazing to me that I see these guys. Neil Smith, I mean, he's got the agility of a wide receiver when I was playing. I mean, back in those days, he could have played wide receiver. 6'4", 275, Neil Smith. Rated about as high as you can get. Second player picked in the entire draft last year. Faster than everybody in this booth. And most everybody on the field. Here is Craig in trouble, and they're going to, he eludes the sack. Griffin, 98, finally ran him out of bounds. But the innovator finds a way on third down when he was almost sacked. 
this is just playing football is what this is. You got to be a football player. Coaches can coach you to a certain point, and at that point, you got to play football. And that's what David Craig is doing. He runs out of the pocket there, realizes he doesn't have anybody open, so he just takes off for the first down. Uh, we just cannot say it enough that David Craig will find a way to beat you, and that's why he's so dangerous. If it or not, a 10 yard rush or not by Craig, the longest run of the day for Seattle. Those two Pro Bowl guys that got behind him haven't done much today. Williams and Warner, they split, and Craig looks to throw on first down. Timing throw, tip ball. Intercepted. Kevin Porter, the strong safety, almost had a play on it. Robert Tyler was the intended receiver. Ron Cherry's interception led to the go-ahead touchdown. David Craig just tried to sneak that ball by the defense before they got set. At the snap of the ball, you have defensive linebackers running backwards to get to a certain position and then stop. What Craig tried to do is throw the ball while they were still dropping back in their position, and it just, uh, you know, got by Robert Tyler. Talk about first down being the job that determines everything else you can do. And now Craig has to throw on second and ten. Doesn't have to, but the probability is about 90 percent that he will. Timing pattern downfield. Too much out. Look at the cover. Kevin Rose drives his drive with Brian Blade. The fans upset. They wanted some pass interference, but. Kevin Rock, this is called, you know, he should have the nickname Blanket. Yeah. Because he, <laughs> he was on my man Brian Blades like a blanket right there. That was great coverage. We were here in the preseason to see the 49ers play the Seahawks when the 49ers featured their the cover brothers. The cover brothers, that's right. The quilt and the blanket, the tire and Griffin. <laughs> Third and ten for the Seahawks who trail by four in the fourth quarter. And Craig is swept under by the pass rush. Second sack of the day, and that was the celebrated rookie Derek Thomas from Alabama. Now with four and a half sacks in five games this season. Derek Thomas is just excellent. He has so much agility, so much strength, so much speed, and so much sacking ability as he just sacks David Craig right I don't know you you can't hold him out the entire game you sure can't Mattis did literally try to hold him out there but he got around him so the Seahawks have to punt and you know Kansas City's game plan with a four-point lead will be to send a Koye at the defense and try to run out the clock and the Seahawks will be attacking the ball they've knocked it three once today not from McCoy from Emil Harry High punt downfield. Very well done by Rodriguez. And Manley signals for and makes a fair catch at his 18 yard line. 40 yard punt. But the game has turned. The Chiefs in command in the second half. Get it when we come back. The Kansas City Chiefs with 17 unanswered points in the second half have rallied to take the lead by a four point margin. Ron Jaworski was talking to us tonight about the importance of one big win to get a young team over the hump. He was hoping today would be the day. And that's the truth. You can have lip service, lip service, lip service, but until you win, you don't really start to believe. And if they can win today, you're going to see a different team from here on out. Now the Seahawks aren't done yet. They'll be attacking the ball. Seattle looking to get it back. They've not scored a touchdown on offense. As the Chiefs go to the run and four and five Seahawks hitters come and bang on Okoye. He's out to the 23-yard line, a gain of about four on the play. Chiefs at their leisure going back into the huddle. You see the game clock down to 4.30 and running. Seattle has to get it back and score a touchdown. This is when they become extremely dangerous. When you have a running attack like the way Kansas City does, and they can get ahead, they can be ahead in the game with four minutes left to go. They have the ability to just control the ball as long as the court is healthy. Jacob Green said that we think that we can tag on him a lot and slow him down. Well, I don't think they'll do that this week. Over 140 yards rushing. Here he goes again. A quarter breaks it up the middle on second down and seven. He gets ahead for four, and that'll bring up third and two. All just across the 26-yard line. Darren Como, the replacement for injured Brian Bosworth, with yet another tackle, 53. Just a delayed draw. And you notice, when you watch Akoya run, he's always falling forward, and the other players are falling away from him as he falls forward. Tom Catlin, the Seahawks 
defensive coordinator just is probably he probably hasn't seen anybody like this since uh, John Henry Johnson so. Tank Younger that promo and I had to hit a toy up at the top of his high low cut <laughs> that's, that's the safest place Anchor High is the only way you can get him third and two and the Koye dives for a cheap first down as he's out to the 32 yard line Jeff Bryant wow. got him but Christian Okoye, a second round draft choice out of Azusa Pacific, makes the play for a first down. This, this is just natural ability to a, at a guy that's 264 pounds. He's able to find the hole, get in there, and realize how to take on blockers. He knows when to, to dip and use his shoulder, and he knows when to jump over people. He's done dip and use the shoulder 28 times for 148 yards and a touchdown. That's a lot of dipping and using shoulders. Boy, is it. Seahawks still have all three of their timeouts remaining. Chiefs have used two of theirs in the second half. Go down to one. Hand off to Saxon, and he doesn't get much. Seattle playing the run. They know that the Seahawks, or that the Chiefs want to run the clock. Timeout is made. Official timeout. Their first timeout. Now Seattle calls its first timeout. They'll get another one automatically when the two-minute clock is up. There's a Koya there on the sidelines, a little bit winded. I know sometimes this timeout is going to work in his favor because he gets a chance to, to catch his breath. But I know sometimes as a running back, when you're overused and they take you out for a play, it takes more energy to run from the huddle to the sideline than it does to just stay in a play and just not do anything and then go the next. Look at some of the finals. A lot of upsets today. Not the least of which Tampa Bay handing the Bears their first loss. Detroit goes to 0 and 5. They're a lot better than an 0 and 5 team, but they just can't get over the hump. So important what Jaworski said. He was with the Philadelphia Eagles in 1978. He said when they played one of the best teams in the NFL, the Miami Dolphins, and they were big underdog. They beat the Dolphins that day, and he said that was the turning point. In the Eagles as that team eventually in '80 went to the Super Bowl. Once you beat one good team, all that stuff you're thinking about, maybe you are good, you really start to believe it. That's exactly right. You've got to do it. You can talk about it and say we need one big one, but you've got to get it. You have to go out and do it. Jaworski with his second start of the Chief, going all the way, going right back to 35, protecting the ball as a player. And again, the Seahawks shut down the run, and they use another timeout. So they've used two. They have one left, and they'll get another one, of course, when the clock winds down to two minutes. Tonight at 8 Eastern Time, NBC Sports will be live at Candlestick Park in San Francisco as the Cubs and the Giants meet in Game 4 of the National League Championship Series. Baseball's League Championships only on NBC. Giants looking to go up 3-1. to one. I mentioned that I would, had to be a Giants fan because I grew up here with the Tacoma Giants, but I also liked Ernie Banks. I'm just trying to yeah. cover, the, cover my bases <laughs> I tell you, they, and they could never win with Ernie and Billy Williams and all those great, because they've 81 years it's been since the Cubs have won a World Series. Oakland looking to close out Toronto in five games. The A's in command, four to nothing in the seventh inning at the Sky Dome in Toronto. Third down and seven. to make sure they don't turn it over. He does not get the first down, but they'll now punt the ball. And the Seahawks, with their wise use of timeouts, will now get another one as the game clock winds down to two minutes and the clock has stopped. One timeout left for Kansas City. The Chiefs down by four, have to get in the end zone, and they'll get it back in a moment. Don Cricky with Ahmad Rashad. It looks like we're going right down to the wire in the kingdom at Seattle. The Seahawks pitcher, David Craig, set to come back out throwing as Seattle is now going to get it back on a punt. It's fourth down and three. Kansas City ready to punt the ball. The Chiefs outscoring the Seahawks 17 to nothing in the second half to take a 20 to 16 lead, looking to break a losing streak here at Seattle. It dates back to 1981. Marty Schottenheimer hoping that this can be the win that makes these guys believe in themselves. 
because one thing Marty is not is a snake oil salesman. <laughs> Whatever he says, I mean, he, he, he means. Yeah, it's pretty forthright. David Hollis is back for the Seahawks. Kelly Goodburn gets hung to the feet. Well hit by Goodburn. He really boomed it. Backpedaling is Hollis. He'll return it from his eight. Look at the special teams play, but Hollis breaks it and finally gets to the 17-yard line. A 52-yard punt by Kelly Bur Goodburn of Kansas City and a nine-yard return. So Goodburn is high five. His job well done. And now it's up to Dave Craig and the Seahawk offense with 1.49 to play. They have the long field to go. 86 yards they have to go and one timeout. And they have not done much offensively throughout the day. But I would, uh, you know, you can't count David. This is when he's most dangerous, when he's back into a corner. Because he will come out fighting. Seahawks with very little production this, this half. Two first downs in this entire in the second half. Greg Lux throws. He makes the connection to Stanzi running in the open field. And Stanzi's ahead for a Seahawks first down. Up to the 34 yard line. Lock running as you see. Seahawks with one timeout left. Craig, cool under fire. Aligns in the shotgun on first and ten. On the run. He's heading for the sideline. He gets the first down. One twenty 20 to play. Field goal won't do it, though. They've got to take it into the end zone to beat the Chiefs. David Craig is simply this, one of this league's great quarterback he really is something he's a leader he's certainly he's the type of guy that there aren't any offensive players that play football that want that would not want to be in the huddle with this guy right now he's rushed the ball three times for 29 yards but he gets everybody's blood pumping in a situation like that they believe that they can score and it's all because of this man right here david craig he's ignited the whole team does week after week first down and 10 he's the leading rusher for seattle with 29 yards and three carries throwing a catch Game is only four yards, and the receiver Tommy Kane stays in bounds. Had to, but the clock continues to run, and the Seahawks go into alignment without a huddle. They have to score a touchdown. The Kingdome sold out. Big rush coming. Here's another throw, another catch. It's not good for a first down, but it's close to the 46 yard line. Now there's an official, oh, it's a Seattle timeout call with 53 seconds to play. Third down coming up. Coach Chuck Knox saw his team lose its first two games and then come back strong, winning at New England 24 to 3. Rallying for 17 points in the fourth quarter last Sunday to come from behind against the Raiders at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Marty Schottenheimer's team, Knox said, is good enough to be 4-0 were it not for the turnovers. Today, they limit them to just one, and they lead the game to the Chiefs as Craig looks on third down. He's in trouble. He's got to make this connection, and he does for a first down. For a first down. An 11-yard gain on third and two. Tommy Payne makes the play at the 35-yard line. A great pitch by Tommy Payne. The ball was tipped. What an ending. Seahawks out of timeout. Craig on first down, takes a look, throws up the middle. It's to John L. Williams. They can't stop the clock now. They're out of timeout. Seahawks quickly into alignment. Craig screaming at his players to get back. You see the game clock, 15 seconds left. Craig bangs the ball down. That will automatically stop the clock. It's not intentional grounding. And with 13 seconds left to play, third down comes up from the 26-yard line. They need a foot for a first down, but they need the end zone. They don't have time to be going for first downs here, Ahmad. It's a lot easier to run routes from 25 yards out when you can run all the way into the end zone. What it does is it spreads the defense out, gives you a chance to find a receiver. It's going to be awful tough, though. Kansas City, they've got the best defensive secondary that I've seen this year. Kim Barron getting a little shot of this heart attack offense. Oh. That's going to be a motion penalty against the Seahawks. Their pass rushers were jockeying into position before the snap of the ball. They're just moving back five yards. It doesn't bother you down when this happens. Ball start. 
offense, number 65. The MVP. By acclamation is Christian Okoya. 30 carries, 156 yards, and a touchdown. But we'll wait till the end of the game to see if the ballot changes with David Craig trying to rally his team. A penalty like this in this situation doesn't bother you at all because you need to get in the end zone anyway. That's five yards. That, that doesn't do anything. Actually give you more room to run around. Chiefs with six defensive backs in the game. Coach Schottenheimer signaling out to them. They're playing a big deep zone. Number three. Dave Craig with third down coming up. 13 seconds to play. They must score a touchdown. Swing pass to Williams. He gets out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Eight seconds left. The Seahawks get a first down, but will not have time to use four down. That's a good one of mine. Give the credit to the offensive line. They're giving Craig time to throw this ball. And when he gets time and finds John L. Williams, it always ends up a positive play. Executive producer of NBC Sports, Terry O'Neill. The producer of today's game, Terry Ewart. Directed by Ted Nathanson. Associate director, Ray Benassi. As now we're coming right down to the wire. But before we do, there's going to be a timeout. For a brief word while everybody catches their breath. I guess <laughs> everybody else did. Well, uh, NBC statistician Dennis Venetian totaling the numbers, and it's been a Koya just dominating play. He has totally outgained the whole rushing attack many times of Seattle. Seattle has only 30 yards rushing, 29 by the quarterback. This is what the National Football League is all about. You play for a chance to win. The Seattle Seahawks have that chance. Down with a little more than 30, but Akoya with a big dominance in the overall numbers. He has carried 30 times. Right now, he can only look from the sidelines as Dave Craig fires into the end zone. Lewis Clark going for the ball. It's incomplete with two seconds left, and the Seahawks will have one more shot at it. So I think here we might go to the bag of tricks. Maybe the hook and ladder, that little dump off over the middle <laughs> and the lateral. That'd be a nice play. I'd like to see him try to throw that ball to Benny Blake. They could use you down there, Amai, that play you had. It was against the Cowboys. I guess if they threw it to Benny Blake, they'd have to throw it all the way to Minnesota, saying that Benny plays for Detroit. This is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> he had that grab in the end zone that thrilled a few Viking fans. Every receiver dreams of this moment, and it's going through their minds right now. As the clock winds down, they make the winning kick. It is the final play of the game, and the turn of the game depends on it. Craig throws into the end zone, downfield. It's intercepted, the game is over. And the Chiefs come back to win by a score of 20 to 16. Deron Cherry with his second interception of the game. As Coach Marty Schottenheimer has congratulated his Chiefs breaking a losing streak that dates back to 1981 here in the Kingdom. As Chuck Knox congratulates him and so does a very sportsman like David Craig. We'll be coming back to the Kingdom in Seattle where the Kansas City Chiefs have just won their second game with a 20 to 16 upset of the Seattle Seahawks. Back in a moment. John Crickey with a Madra shot back at the Kingdom, Kansas City, shutting out Seattle in the second half, comes back to win with 17 second half points, 20 to 16 feet around the running of Christian Okoya. And now it's time for the most valuable player award sponsored by Budweiser, Today's MVP, fullback Christian Akoy of the Kansas City Chiefs, who rushed for 156 yards and a touchdown. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's game. Now, the big win that the Kansas City Chiefs have been hoping for and fighting so hard for may have come today as they beat a very good Seattle team at Seattle. Tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time, NBC Sports will be live at Candlestick Park in San Francisco as the Cubs and the Giants meet in game four of the National League Championship Series. Only